Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Pop out chat. Good morning, GM, GM. All right, guys, I couldn't stop last night. I couldn't stop, you know? Uh, once, once this, it's like, it's like Pringles, man. Dude, advertising is so in my head, man. Okay. So I worked hard last night. And I wrote this, parse. So we got the compiler working yesterday. You saw us get the compiler working yesterday in Docker. Uh, so I wrote this thing to parse it and extract the code uh, that actually runs on the edge TPO. And for reference, this is an edge TPO. All right, so that's an edge TPO. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. That's edge TPO, and I wrote something to extract the code, right? So now we have code. Uh, HTPU, X-ray, yeah, programs, here we go. So this is like the code which does a ReLU. Look at this. This is the code. What does this look like to you? Alex and Harold are running comma with Adib advising them, you know. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm so excited about this. All right, so first off, this stream is sponsored by Celsius. Uh, can you be sponsored by shit even if they don't pay you? I paid for this Celsius. Uh, but because I'm an impartial, that means I can tell you the truth. And honestly, I, I feel like this stuff's made in a vat and there's like mad chemicals. But either way... Multi-cam or ultrasonic? Oh my god. Edward Apollo, what are you saying? What are you saying? You don't need any of that shit. One camera. We ship two because, uh, you know. Should I just start making up shit and say like our investors made us? Nope, no, no. Um, all bad decisions were mine. I gotta hate that wire anyway. Good morning. Am I working out? No, not today. I thought about it. You remind me of Kanye? I take that as a compliment. Uh, you know, Kanye's going through some hard times, man. I'd be mad if the, you know, my wife took my kids too. Um, okay, so this is a program that runs on the Edge TPU. What does this look like to you? Like I was, I was staring at it last night and I'm like, what is this? This is a custom instruction set. So today we're gonna reverse engineer it. No, I mean, it does seem to use LLVM, okay. So this is the program that produces these things. It's called the Edge TPU compiler. But I have not found many hints in this program. It seems like they have very little debugging information. My stream's bugging. Seems fine. Which CPU? I don't think it's a CPU. I think it's custom. Um, so part of the thing that informs my reasoning on this is when you look here, I've documented the TPU and the TPU compiler has a lot more, uh, has a lot more debug information in it. So I found out what the instructions are for the, uh, for the TPU, the big TPU. And they have these VLIW instructions. Uh, so it seems like this is similar. 
and we're gonna have to go down to the bit level because it's it's literally an instruction set it looks like and just looking at it, another thing that makes me think it's an instruction set is like these things are uh, this is this is uh, 16 bytes so 256 bits so it seems like it's a 256 bit instruction set I also found this last night um gptpu these guys but i was kind of sad when i looked into it more they just like call the compiler a whole lot they, they didn't go deeper than the compiler um so i i think it's uh So here, I can show you something. Um, parse. Should also have this just going to compile. It's kind of annoying to run both. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to pull parse into the compile. I was gonna complain. It's gonna be like I can't find the uh, platforms. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, I changed. Oh. works now. Uh, so now I can do something like generate model and parse. So this is going to compile a model, calls the compiler, it's in Docker, it's beautiful, love Docker, uh, and it shows me that it's outputting B, uh, B30 amounts of code, and these things are offsets into the code. They're like, it's like linking. Good morning. Um, so I thought this would be cool to stream. We're gonna see how much progress we make. Today, we are reverse engineering the custom instruction set inside the Edge TPU. Uh, if you work at Google, we'd love to have you come join our stream and you can come laugh at me and about the things I get wrong. A pomp 85, we do have a rule in here. We speak English. Uh, we do not speak French, we speak English because this is America. Uh, Spanish is also somewhat acceptable, but French, no, 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 no. Mm, all right, we'll zoom in a tiny bit. Oh, they didn't teach you this in college. Oh shit, man. You know, maybe, maybe, who taught you college was gonna give you information? What marketing, you know, you actually can stop after you pop the top off Pringles and college is not the gateway to a better life. You fell for an advertising campaign. Um, Wait, no, 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 oh, come on. You kind of know what this is. If you don't know what this is, then we're gonna have to go to subscriber only. Like, cause we haven't even done anything hard yet. This is just, I'm just saying that this is a custom instruction set. I, I know as little about it as you, but I think each one of these is an instruction that's executed by the processor. Look, college is not always a scam. If somebody else pays for it, or if you're just there, like I showed up at Carnegie Mellon, I paid for it one year. I took operating systems, I took compilers, I took AI, uh, I took this freshman weeder math course, and it was great. I learned a lot, totally worth it. If you're there to learn, by all means. If you got someone else paying for it, by all means party, chill, you know. 
But if you're paying for it because you think you're gonna earn a degree and this degree is gonna increase your earning potential in the future, that's where you're getting scammed. All right, so like, look at these, look at these. Look at these. It's gotta be an structure, right? Like, look at this one, look at this one. Like, they're almost the same, but this one has some Fs in here and this one doesn't. Um, Let me change up parse a little to not this thing. So these are offset bits into the uh, into the code. So we kind of get a hint there. But I think we're doing this, I think we're doing this pure black box. Oh, you got something for me? Did so oh yeah, can someone just look around? I'm sure someone like figured some of this stuff out. No, this is a Python stack profiler. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but I don't think that's gonna help us now. Um, all right, guys. All right, all right, all right. We're not talking about how university is a scam. If that's what you guys want to talk about, we're going to have to go to subscriber only. Uh, we're talking about how we're going to reverse engineer this instruction set, and we got to stay on topic. Okay. Edge TPU instruction set. I Googled this a whole bunch last night, and I didn't find anything. Don't do sub only mode, just for you, sub only mode. Uh, there's like so little information on this stuff. I mean, the best I can do is like think about the things that I found when I reverse engineered the, the TPU, but I didn't get that far with that either. Okay, so we have a few options. Um, we can really keep trying to black box this. Okay, so this is the output code size. Um, this is what I'm generating it from. I commented out the Keras stuff. Now I'm just using this function here. All right, so like if I make it a function like, let's do that, right? Now it's going to generate the model. It's going to compile it. All right, you see sub, rel, you mal, quantize. Okay, that's a lot bigger. That that made a lot more code. So let's, oh, it also has shape four. So let's go back to shape one. That's a lot of code. Okay, let's just, what if I do rel u times two? Is that the same amount of code? Yeah, ReLU times two is the same amount of code. What if I do like ReLU minus one? And that generates a huge amount of code. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, I had to just write it out in temp prog, so we can do ReLU sub one uh, dot coral. Now we have this program, and this program is a lot longer. So I started writing a compare tool. My compare tool is very mediocre. Uh, I don't need that assert anymore. Let's just call these A and B, range max length A and B.
I'm just writing like a crappy hex dump tool. See what I'm writing? Uh, if da not equal to db, I'll just print out da here. index out of range if length a is less than i index out of range oh if i less than length a oops what does that do it's just like i'm just compiling a tensorflow function to the uh, to the edge tpo so you see that this whole preamble is the same. Um, we should actually have we should actually output both sides of this. So oh, this is hard to write. these green so it's more readable and when we get here we can say app plus equals temp Let's see if that works nope uh what oh we gotta reset temp okay there we go it's kind of what i was going for um oh we have to do that at the end too. Mm, that one's different. That just upsets me. Uh, that just upsets me, boys. Mm, that one's different. Now we can compare uh, the two things. And like, they're not all that different. Um, so this is like, if I can compare, I, I wrote a couple programs yesterday. One of them does a ReLU and one of them does a multiply by two. And you'll see that like the only difference is right here in this single instruction. Um, I also had one where I did a ReLU on two bytes instead of one byte. Okay, look, it's that same instruction that changes, it's just that's what changes, which is weird. Off topic garbage, guys, off topic garbage. It's, like, it's just this like one instruction. So we can like mess around with that instruction and see what happens. But then like we add in this sub one and it's like a whole crazy big change. This, this confirms a lot of what I believe about this being a uh, like instruction set, right? Look at how look at how this instruction here is moved down to here.
All right, sorry for writing garbage code. It's early in the morning. I'm apologizing in advance. Now we can see where, okay, so it marks these things as like places that you wanna modify. It's like, this is from the linker. So we can see where those actually are. Okay, they're here. Which makes sense, right? Uh, are they all right there? Well, wow, that's actually really. Is that it? Oh, this one's big. Let's go back to a single ReLU. Come on, do you people follow this at all? This is easy shit. We don't even do anything hard yet. Like, okay. So over here I have a compiler, which is compiling this function for the coral, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How come I only see six? Oh, it's because I copy and pasted the wrong one. Good morning. What do I see happening in the first year of Tiny Corp? This. This is the Tiny Corp. Live streamed for your pleasure. See, look, here are these things here. Oh, I think that's the output. I think it, you want to like label things in TensorFlow. I think you can label them. Like TensorFlow supports like names and shit. Uh, can I name it? Or can I say like name equals G input? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, G. All right, so that just won't be called X. Let's see if it throws G and puts down there. No, oh, it's still called X. Uh, F get concrete function. G output. Function got an unexpected argument name. Concrete function, lambda x, args. Oh, if the x comes from here. Oh, okay, let's call this g input. Is that really where the x comes from? Vibster, thank you for subscribing. Good morning. Okay, these are going to change to G input. Oh, this is exciting. I don't exactly understand how this works then. Okay, these are G input. That's good. Um, okay, and these things are also like you can look at the type. So I found this. This is like the. Uh, they're called Darwin executables with two ends. Um, this is from the Edge TPU repo. I found this last night. So you can see that these G inputs are base address input activations. And look at this bundle ALU move I instruction. That's cool, right? So we know, oh man, this is like some like Sherlock or mastermind shit. We know that these instructions here are, uh, are move I instructions. So this is a bundle ALU move I instruction. We have a real name of one instruction and that's super exciting. Um, I don't want that to be called identity. That's just a boring name. Uh, 
Thank you for subscribing. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Um, get concrete function. You can't just call the function identity and make it the identity, bro. Actually, if I do make the function the identity, you'll see it does not work. See, I compile to nothing. So you actually have to do something in the function. Okay, so we're back to compiling our ReLU. Um, we have these things. Okay, so these inputs are parameters and scratch. So the addresses get put in here. These two are parameters, these two are scratch. Uh, this is the input, and then this is the output, and then I would assume that what this code does is actually store and send the output. Uh, it's a little odd that they're after the part that changes. To load output activation base address. It's also crazy to me that when you look at the other code, I didn't change any of it and it still works. Uh, I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe it's just fine. Okay, this is the most exciting thing I found is bundle ALU. So let's take a look in lib edge tpu and see if we find anything more that looks like that no. bundle alu okay it seems like it's called a bundle it seems like they call each instruction a bundle does the word bundle appear anywhere else note that the package data is not aligned in the package bundle file but it will be loaded into an aligned memory block for flat buffer only supports 1D vector considering creating a new root type for new chips. Oh yeah, what you missed last night was that we parsed this whole flat buffer. This flat buffer turns out to be inside the custom op. So this is the uh, TF light file. You load the TF light file, you get operations operators and then there's this thing called custom options and it's all in this custom options where you actually get the uh, code that executes on the edge tpu so remember yesterday when we compiled uh for the edge tpu it replaces the entire graph with something just called edge tpu custom op um, and inside custom options is where the code is and then this is the uh thing to uh and this is all this is all open source from google um this is the thing to actually get the, uh, this is the program that runs. So then they have this thing called encoded instruction bit streams and you can dive down into instruction bit streams and you have a bit stream. And then these things are field offsets, uh, which were the things that we were looking at here. So these numbers here are, are the field offsets. Um, that tell you where to update uh, these things. Yeah, so that's how you know. Oh, that's how I know where the bytes are in the output. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I parsed the whole structure last night. It's all open source on, on libtpux, right? Sorry, I, I left yesterday's stream feeling like a failure, and you know I hate feeling like a failure, so I just uh, kept working. I got some food and, uh, you know, went hard. Um, the blue highlights are the field offsets, yes. Thank you for paying attention. Uh, the blue highlights are the field offsets, and then we know from this that this instruction must be a bundle ALU move I instruction. So let's take a quick look in the strings of the compiler to see if move I is mentioned. 
Uh, it's not. It's just like in the word removing. It's land. Bundle. Bundle. ALU. Just inside of this stuff. This code's unreadable. So what I have loaded here in Gidra is the Edge TPU compiler. You can download the Edge TPU compiler, but it has almost no uh, almost no documentation in it. I spent yesterday trying to figure out how to uh, enable logging, but I now think there just is no logging. Um, yeah, someone sent me an email, actually took me up on my challenge, figured out how to enable all, like if you use glog, how to enable everything. But I don't think there's, don't think there's anything here. RC CPU mode. See, there, are, there does seem like there's other like weird flags you can enable. Um, but yeah, I think we might be pretty much on our own to reverse engineer this. You know, I did this once before. I did this when I was, uh, when I was uh, like 20 years old, Apple in iOS version three pushed the encryption to the audio DSP. So I reverse engineered this whole instruction set for this audio DSP and then um, found out that it was actually documented somewhere. <laughs> like it was just a PDF and I'm like, oh shit, man. Uh, this is really nice. But um, so unfortunately, that audio DSP had two byte instructions. Uh, it's a lot easier to reverse engineer an instruction set with two byte instructions than it is to reverse engineer uh, an instruction set with 10 byte instructions. I did learn something. So, I mean, Man, if we could just get the docs on this. Maybe we shouldn't be using Google. At least they're not trying to sell me, you know, oh, not here. They're trying to sell me movies or something. You know what's a good place to look? GitHub search. I mean, they should find this at least. Because this is open source code. Sign in. Uh, no, nothing exciting, just the same file over and over again. Search for bundle ALU, you get some other stuff, but nothing too exciting. This just looks like junk. Uh, nothing, nothing. I'll right, be signing in for this. 
No, I have, like this. Does someone want to look around and see if they can find anything? Come on, viewers. Like, duh, we have we have one instruction just documented right here, and we know which we know what it is. I, I bet you just put the address like in here. It looks it looks pretty straightforward, right? No, actually, it was a little weird because it was 0.75, so it's actually not like a line to the zero. Right, if you see that these things are, uh, this is not aligned to a uh, 72.75. So this is actually the, you skip six bits here. And then you get the constant. Um, so the good news is the way architectures usually work is the same things in the ISA mean the same things over and over again. Um, and my guess is going to be that this instruction targets the scalar unit. We also have, in other, in other good news, um, there might be some way to like single step on this stuff. Well, should we get ReLU running? Maybe we should do that. downloads the firmware. There's also firmware, but I don't think we're going to have much luck there. Uh, oh, I also added like the length of the stuff, right? Um, so you see here, it sets up the uh, stuff. It loads in um, some code and then it runs it. Should we clean this code up? I think we should clean this code up. Hot garbage, man. Let's make a new file called simple.py. See, you know what's nice about not having a job? You can write crappy code. Simple. Well, you can't call it simple. What about the other people who are going to interact with your code? Yeah, but fuck them, man. Fuck George Hotz in one year who looks at this again. Fuck that guy. Um, he don't get shit. Make a function called open device. Um, note that it may download firmware. Uh, I, that's a different thing. I don't think you're going to find anything in. I don't think TensorFlow is a good place to look. All right, we'll leave the hex dumps in here. That opens the device. Uh, we have the thing here that loads the registers.
what is one and zero b rack how come some registers have that and some registers don't but like okay there, there are cool things uh in the register list so like you know you could fork uh for kv and regs print f So this is the all this is the list of all the registers in the uh, device. Pretty cool, right? Can we initialize array with oh this is all instructions. So the data is inputted elsewhere. So the programs that I was compiling were simple little programs um, that don't uh, that don't have any um, uh, data. They're just they're just fixed. So I saw some stuff about PC here. Current PC. We should also look, there's a chance that there's some documentation in here about hmm. This is cool. This is a this is something that we can yeah okay, we know the instruction of that um, contextual CSRs in scalar uh, data path so we have things like scalar core run control and execute control. Write a function like read register. Uh, we figure out debug mode. No, I don't think there is a debug mode. I think that's just kind of it. So these are the reads, and if you do this, it, uh, so that like, C0 is a read, and 40 is a write. Yeah, so you see that like writes 0, 1 to scalar core run control. which like probably starts it running or something. We can figure out which of these writes we actually need. Um, okay, let's open, uh, where's LL send? Keep this function around. Um, this is garbage. So let's try like open, let's try to send that ReLU program and see what we get.
class is zero uh, because zero is the program. Uh, file not found, no such directory. That's because we didn't rb. Okay, uh, it sent something. Let's see if we get a response. No, we're not getting a response right now. And it's because we're not sending the setup. Uh, so let's send the setup. Gonna copy and paste this into here. And then we'll do this. We gotta first open the device, set up registers, and we're gonna we're gonna figure out a minimum set that we need. Uh, run program. Oh, we probably also need to send we might not need to, I don't know. Okay. Well, notice how it is blinking the light. So that's some progress. But it looks like we're stuck in an infinite loop somewhere. So let's unplug it and plug it back in. I think we're gonna have to send some bytes. Um, let's just try this. I don't know how much it actually has to send. You know what we can do? We, I have the stuff to run it. Let's just run it. Uh, okay, generate model. We're doing the simple ReLU. That's good. Um, I can use a dot out and I can run the model. So this runs the model using the uh, TensorFlow backend. This is actually the proper Google. Downloads the firmware, that's great. Okay, cool. Uh, it runs the model. Bulk in eight bytes from buffer index zero. It's still doing several DMAs. Uh, let me, we can modify that code or we can just, Oh, remember yesterday when I was like patching the thing? I found out I could just set the uh, I could set the debug level here. So let's raise that. Um, thank you for subscribing. Thirty B. Notice that's the same as the header we're sending over here, right? Uh, async out bulk transfer. Async out one end. Okay. Here. Okay. So here we have to send another. Okay. Here we send eight bytes. Okay. So I think. Let me just look at this quickly so I can figure out what uh, debug level it is so I can set it to the minimum one that still includes that because that's where the good shit is. Uh, command P. And that's on line 215. It has a debug level of 10, great. Um, okay. So we have to send eight bytes with one. So let's send eight bytes. Uh, where is that? It's in simple. It's actually eight bytes. Five, six, seven, eight. The count would be proud. Let's go. Okay, cool. Look, we got a response. Ha oh, ha! Yeah, we run in ReLU. Yeah, simple, easy, easy. All right, wait. Let's just reset the device. Make sure that like we got everything in that program. That downloads the firmware. Okay, works. Great. Okay. Uh, 
simple is running value. Okay, um, what we can do now, there's a few things we should do. We should clean up this garbage. These are reeds, so we should figure out which ones we actually need. Uh, these 40s are right, the C0s are reeds. We should figure out which ones we actually need. What's OMCAA? <laughs> Oh. Should tell me what this is? Oh, enable thermal shutdown interrupt. Oh, that sounds important. So look here, there are like useful things here. That's kind of cool. Uh, oh, it tells me like what the different bit fields are. Great. These are named after fields in the spec. Can I have the spec, please? Can I please have spec? All right, just in case I'm missing something, let's just Google. Okay, great, nothing. Um, oh, e-fuse. By the way, I stole all these control transfers from my old code that did this. Let's just like take these out. Do we need them? Yes, we needed them. Because now it's broken. Those ones weren't important. Now it works again. All right. So hacking is using strings. There's another thing hacking is too. It is binary searching by hand. Um, so first off, all these C zeros are useless. I think. All right, still works. Uh, I also, that's pretty good actually. Oh, I don't think this is actually getting the real output. I think there's actually more output to get to. That's like just like the acknowledgement output. Um, I think we can get more output if we read here. Uh, oh, actually, wait, we know what this program does. It's ReLU. So let's pass in something like FX. Wait, how is ReLU going to do anything? They're all positive. Okay, look, it just passes in. It's just through the identity, right? 7F. Oh, but I bet if I put in like 0, 1, it won't pass it through because it's ReLU. Uh, no, that passes it through. Okay, let's try something like times 2. This should multiply by 2. Uh, just 0. Okay, um, let's multiply a bigger number by two. Let's try something like 40. Multiply 40 by two. 20, okay. Well, I'll take it, it divides by two. That's pretty good. That's almost multiplying by two. Let's see, this is gonna be 18. 18, all right, cool. That doesn't make any sense. Why does it actually divide by two?
That really doesn't make any sense. All right, let's just like compile it again and make sure I didn't mess up. Writing a function that's clearly two times. Programs. No, oh, it did modify it. Okay. I don't know. Maybe I did it wrong the first time. Let's try that. Multiply by two. Okay, that's just the identity now. Put in 30, right? Lambda g input equals two times g input. Okay, let's check out mol2.coral and let's copy in mol2fake.coral. And then let's run my comparer and see the difference. Weird. Okay. Did I write something wrong? Let's try like subtracting one. I don't know. Putting in 30, I expect to get 2f. Let's see if this one works. 30. Um, I mean, this might be some bullshit because of the quantization. Oh, there is, you know what? I have RNG in my in my compiler that I shouldn't have. Uh, here, representative data set. Um, let's try that. Let's add one, sub one. Subtraction seems hard. Let's just try adding one. Come on, if you can't add one, I don't know what you can do. Temp prog add one dot coral. Okay. That adds one. Now let's go over here. Cause right, I had RNG. And, you know, RNG is just evil. Add one? Mm, no, just the identity. Any other reason these wouldn't work? Why am I just getting that? All right, let's go back to times two. Root dot f get concrete function input data. I'm a little worried about this because it's not a, uh, should that be TF constant or should that be something like placeholder? Uh, How do I 
find out which address to read, uh, you don't actually have to read an address. You just uh, just dump the USB and it gives it to you. Okay. Why did none of these programs do anything now? Okay, they're all just the identity now. I really get it. It almost just seems broken. Okay, that one still seems to divide by two. We found one program that does something and it's this one and it divides by two. It does seem to reliably divide by two though. Okay, you gotta have to do something. I'll take it. Is this not right? What is TF constant? I don't want a constant tensor, I want a placeholder. It's that, right? I'm only running parse. Oh shit. I'm gonna run compile. Oh, I was doing nothing this whole time. Great. Great. Okay. Well, that's nice. Oh, guys, I wasn't compiling it. Oh, okay, let's add one. Adds one. Take a look. Beautiful. Okay. Let's cp temp prog add one dot coral. Let's try add one dot coral. Who thinks it's going to add one? All right. So for reference, we're putting in 48. So I expect it to return 49. This should be 49. Let's see. 48. Lame. Let's go back to multiply by two. I'm updating temp prog, right? If you do like, yeah, that's right. Multi new dot core. Go in here. Mole to new dot coral. Okay, again, we're dividing by two. It's almost what we want. Why is mole dividing? Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. We can we can get this here. Ah. So it's actually doing nothing, it seems, except the scale is different, right? Because look, the scale here is one and the scale here is two. So it's not actually multiplying. Yeah, it's actually weird. Why is this called identity? So this function's being compiled to do nothing. but it is returning less because it has a scale that's different. So that explains why it's, uh, it's dividing by two. So this program actually does nothing, but it effectively divides by two because the scale is different. You know what, I'll take it. I'll take it and we're just gonna call the program div two because that's actually what it does. And we'll deal with all this later. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, the compiler, I mean, the scale is stored there. I don't exactly know why it's giving me identity here. Um, this just might be a bug in how I'm compiling this. See if my times two function actually works. What if I try something like two save two? Is that gonna give me four? Expect a tensor. Okay. Uh, TF dot tensor. I don't know how. Does anyone know how to use TensorFlow? I don't know how to use TensorFlow. Does that work? Did I mean capital T tensor? I totally did. Let's do that. Maybe that works. Come on, give me four. Missing two positional requirements. Uh, TF dot ones. Okay, gives me four. So it works. Concrete functions. What, what is this model? Currently, the converter can only. Oh, like, okay, of course ReLU is not going to do anything because, yeah, right? Because all the numbers that I'm putting in are positive. Um, so we actually did manage to make code that divides by two. And the only reason it divides by two is because it's actually the identity. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't scale. Okay. You want to make code that divides by four? Let's see if this works. Let's call it div four dot coral. Uh, so we have forty eight. I expect to see twelve. Twelve? Oh, actually, let's also check is the scale right? Yeah. yeah. Notice how the scale is now four. So is this gonna be 12? No. 24. Great. Is there any difference between div two and div four? I did compile it, right? Make compare take some. George, you need to work on your infrastructure, so stop making stupid typos that waste two hours. Yeah, I know. Okay. Div two and div four are identical. which is interesting. I mean, it kind of makes sense. If 
why is the name of this identity? Where's it getting the word identity from? I don't like that. Um, I don't know. Do you want to try going back to Karas models? I don't trust. I don't trust TensorFlow. Let's go back to a Karas model, and I believe. Does this work? Do I have to compile the model, or does that just work? Okay, that just works. Uh, that's ReLU. Let's do, I can say Lambda, can I not? Okay, notice how the scales are invalid model. Oh, skipping, because it's not built. Is Lambda not allowed? Lambda not allowed, or because I didn't compile the model. Mm, lambda not allowed. Relu allowed though. All right, let's look at the cross layers and figure out which one we can use to multiply by two. We can use a dense layer. You want to use a dense layer? This is going to be big. Oh, but this now has weights. Oh, yeah. See, look, now it's like broken into two things because it has weights now. It has two parts. It's very complicated now. Just ReLU uh, doesn't do it. Oh, look, like the scale is like. Yeah. Uh, okay. We need a cross layer that just multiplies by two. How do I get that? Oh, TF variable, I feel like, is what we needed. Oh my god, how does anybody use TensorFlow? Tf dot mat. Oh, here we go. Multiply. Is this a layer? Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. Multiply. It takes in a list of tensors, all of the same shape, and returns a single tensor. No, that's not what we want. Rescaling? Hmm, that's what we want. Okay, let's try that. Two. It's going to multiply it by two. Did I compile? Okay, I compiled to so a single multiply. Uh, I notice how the scale here is two. Uh, at least it's not doing anything stupid with, okay, it is the same size. So I actually expect this to be the identity, right? Because the scale there is two. Uh, you know what will make it not the identity? Let me go to 100 here and let's make sure the scale stays one. Uh, useless. All right, let's confirm that this is actually the identity. So temp prog, let's say identity dot coral. Uh, let's go to simple. We're gonna run the identity. Actually, this shouldn't be the identity. They should actually divide by two, I think. Okay, it divides by two. Okay. Um, diff, div two dot coral identity dot coral. Okay, there's no difference. Okay, let's copy identity dot coral over to div two dot coral. And now, let's just try this. This should. Let's see if this actually divides by four. Now. I, I feel like something was going on weird with the uh, with that function thing, but hopefully it doesn't happen now. Okay, so we're gonna see a scale of four. Yeah, scale of four. So wait. No, why did that divide by two? That doesn't make sense. It should do nothing. <sighs> I 
diff div two dot coral div four dot coral. No difference. That doesn't make sense, right? Is there a way to force it not to scale? Because that's just going to be annoying to deal with. Here we go. Quantized input stats. Instead of giving it a representative data set, what if I get rid of that representative data set? And let's go back and multiply by two. Let's see if we can actually make it multiply by two without scale. Uh, for full integer quantization, I don't want it to quantization. probably wasn't the uh, function thing. So what if I have a plus one? Why does plus one not work? Does that have scale? Oh, it probably just moves the zero point. Oh, it has a tiny bit of scale. Same garbage, okay. I don't want these things to scale. Um, if I do that, all right, that should work. That should not give me a scale, right? That should add one to every... I'm not happy about this. Is there some way to tell the converter not to uh, not to scale? Oh, do we want to enable the experimental new quantizer? Oh, that sounds exciting. Don't you love the TensorFlow just includes great options like this? <laughs> All right, what will make it not quantize? Or should we just should we just go with what we have and realize that all we can do is like divide and shit? We have a working program and it's div two. As long as you want to divide by two, we have a coral program that can help you out. It reliably divides by two. Let's see. What's C zero divided by two? It's 60, wow, what a reliable program. We can also do this. I mean, that is sh changing the shape actually works. Does that change the size of the program? No, it doesn't go. Okay. 
So let's see if this is div2 underscore four dot coral. So this should actually behave the same uh, here, but I should be able to put in more things. Or you know what? Does this even matter? What, what if I put in like some other stuff here? Like let's do 80, 40, and 20. Okay, it divided all of them. Is div 2, 4 any different? No, it's the identical program. Okay. They're the same. Okay. So it looks like it doesn't matter, and we can put in we can put in eight things, and it divides them. Okay. Actually, can we put in the full eight? Let's see if we can put in the full eight. No, we can't put in eight. We can only put in four. That's great. Mm, what if I change this to be eight? This program has to be different, right? Okay, eight is different. Lots of differences for eight. Let's see if we can run that if it'll actually do eight. Okay, it did eight. Cool. So that actually works. I don't know why I created div four. Div four is garbage. Div2 and Div28 actually work. They're the only ones that work. And look at all those, those big changes, guys. Okay, this must be like the length of the loop or something. How are we doing on viewers? Are people feeling this? Four hundred, five hundred, something. All right, people are kind of feeling this. This is reverse engineering, you know. Are you guys happy with reverse engineering? All right, why don't we talk? Um. If I start to hear you guys going off topic on some bullshit again, uh, we're going to have to clamp down, but I don't think you'll do that. I think you're, you're good non-subscribers. That's a contradiction, man. It's an oxymoron. Oh, what are your thoughts on masters and PhDs? Oh, any tips for be up no 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 the the misspelling of tips is the reason we have to go back to subscribers only any tips tips you know bro bro sorry i am reverse 66 i'm gonna rip on you come on my stream you get ripped on uh <laughs> Sometimes, like, I wonder, are you trying to be a meme? Are you trying to be a meme? Like Leora Jenkins, you're trying to be a meme. Mm. Wow, look, that makes such a big change. Uh... All right, guys, as long as what you want to do is divide by two, we got you got a great program that divides by two crypto cod three thank you for gifting subs i appreciate you uh do you have a question do you have a question mm. 
All right, should we go through and figure out which registers we actually need and try to, oh yeah, yeah, that's what we were gonna do. We were going to start, okay. Yeah, let's, let's clean up, let's clean up this hot garbage, right? Um, change this, right, something called like right register. Well, first off, Request type is this. I don't know why some B requests that. Regnum, that's fine. Wval. It's fine. Data. I guess we do have to include PREC here. I don't really understand why, but okay. So if we change this to write register, and we can say something like SCU control zero, or first, we might can do this, but actually probably not. A pipe error. That's the exact same thing that this one's doing. Oh, I got okay. I see. I see. There's actually a one there. There we go. Okay, so it looks like all the registers that start with 1a have a one here, and all the registers that start with four have a different. How far have we come? Well, uh, we now have, wait, what? Hang on, wait, let me just, I don't, why, don't, why does that work? I don't this one work. That works, why doesn't this? I see you control three. Do you need a typo? Right now we're going through the, yeah, we can reliably divide by two. That is the progress that we've made. Um, so we're cleaning up, we're writing like a really simple thing that's just gonna execute things. It writes a whole bunch of registers to the device and then it downloads this little program. Um, then you send the program, you send the input data, you get this confirmation. Uh, getting status response uh, yeah and then you get the output tensor right so you see that this is what we're sending and then this is what we're getting back and it's just these numbers but divided by two uh, it's a little annoying to work through all of like tensorflow's scaling stuff I can't exactly figure out why, like, it doesn't totally make sense that it returns that. It would make sense if it returned divided by two, if the scale were, 
and four. Because I told it to multiply by two. It would make sense if it actually just wasn't compiling anything for the edge TPU. Regardless, look, we have this program running. It divides by two. This is what the program looks like. Uh, these are, looks like to be hex 10 byte uh, instructions. Um, and we know that the blue ones here are bundle ALU move I, thanks to the only little piece of documentation we could find on them. Uh, so that's kind of where we are there. Now let's go through the registers and figure out what the registers are because there's an exciting register we can read uh, called PC. And understand why that doesn't work. It should be the same as that, right? Did I break anything? Do I just need a tiny sleep? No. Hmm. I mean, that sure should be this, right? 5C028550. She just writes it right there. I don't get it. I put the one in there. SCU control three. Same address. Um, what if I just write three? Does that work? It doesn't like that one. Can I remove this? Well, I didn't need that in the first place, so we actually don't know if it's doing the right thing. Oh, do I need a B there? It's probably right. Big zero, deep sleep. All right, so we're moving them to this much more legible Python. You control two. We have some documentation on what these things actually are. Um, cool. We can go through and finish that at some point. But for now, let's get read register to work. I assume it has the same here. We actually still have those in connect. 
Uh, yeah, it's the same pattern. Okay, cool. Uh, B rack name, and we'll just say LN. These are kind of boring. Let's just put them in there. All right, now let's like read SCU control one before our headstone. Four. Oh. Okay, there we go. Cool. Uh, so when we read it, we actually get back something totally different uh, from when we wrote it. But I don't understand. Wait, why is that different? What? Oh. Is that the same thing we got when we wrote? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so let's get let's move on to reading cool registers. Uh, where's my register list? Current PC. Piper. Oh, look at that. 66. Now, I don't know what that means. But okay, what this does tell us is we send the program, and then wherever we're waiting for the input, right? Because we haven't sent the input yet. Once we send the input here, we're going to get something different, I think. Yeah, now we've moved on to 173. Use semicolons and Python all right? Cool. Once we send the input, we get something different, right? Now how about after we get the status response before we get the output tensor? That's no different. Now how about after we get the output tensor? Check it out. So um, uh, for those that don't know, uh, PC is program counter, right? Which is assume like where we actually are in the program. So we're gonna get a debugger. And then once we have a debugger, uh, we can do a lot of good stuff. Okay, so which program are we running? Running div 2.8. Is it something like, is it at hex 420? Did that make sense? Maybe it's here. Some of these things have to be like interacting with the USB peripheral, right? Um, let's just see if we get any different answers. We do it all a bunch of times. No, all 66 is okay. But. Uh, I have this. All right, so it's 66. Let's see where 173 is. I mean, I assume that it's times 10, right? So that's AD0, so that's close to the end of the program here. 
I would assume that that's right. So we wait it does 420 and 80 zero have the same 80 zero 48 no they look different um I don't know if you mean anything well because it could just be like already loaded into the uh 420 is the only real weight instruction here. Okay, let's hot patch the program. Now let's see how it behaves differently. broke the program boys we broke the program this does make me think that 66 is not actually 420 because that seemed to still be okay 66 is probably something else all right so you guys know about genomics and how they do knockout studies on mice we're doing knockout studies on programs you know, we're knocking out an instruction and seeing what changes. Um, actually, there might be some mode we can put it in where we uh, where we can single step. So let's take a look. There's like some some of these functions are called like execution mode. Or there was a whole thing describing this. Uh, this here we go. PLL clock, now that just enables like USB Phi garbage, reset garbage, clock speeds. Um, here we go. Oh. All this disable stuff if you do have the e fuses. Did someone disable? Oh, that'd be sad if someone disabled my great mode. Uh, is there a register called e fuse? Yeah, here it is. E fuse. Zero, zero. Uh, let's just throw a read register in here. Uh, it's going to be in one, 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 four. Let's try that. What? Don't like e-fuse? Oh, I forgot an underscore. X20, so it doesn't look like single steps disabled. What is disabled? Uh, USB SSC mode is enabled, and then this is uh, 48, I don't know. Some of those are disabled. But okay, there's something in here about single step. Let's figure out how to turn it on. Single link, single step. No. something called like execution mode. Op run control. Run controls should change the run states. Run state value. Do run control. Oh, here. here let's just look at this. Oh, here we go. Move to run, move to halt, move to single step. Oh, oh you gotta love it. Oh, you gotta love it. Thanks, Drake. Um, right register. Okay, so this is gonna be with a zero. Run control.
single step mode. Great, did nothing. We did write it. You read it back and confirm. All zeros. Useless. Uh, there's another one called like op here, run status. Breakpoints. Wow, we can set breakpoints. Um, here, op run status. Ooh, op breakpoint. Oh, that's crazy. Up run status zero. Uh, I don't know. What if I set it here after we send the program? Nothing. Oh. Okay, hang on. It might not be op run control we want. It might be like scalar core run control or something. Op doesn't even seem to be working. Is there a scalar core run status? Same garbage, okay. Um, Textual CSRs in Scalar. What's execute control? Maybe this is better. Are you setting that? No, we're not. In feed, out feed, parameter pop run control. It's a lot of run controls. Fatal error run control. Let's try this. Let's try FF. FF should just like break the whole thing. Notice how current PC stayed at zero. And now we're just blinking the light. Power cycle. Mask the hex hundred instruction. Because there might be a header. We might have like an off by one error here. No, this might be a really current PC zero the whole time. I coded this right, right? Oh, no, I didn't code this right. Ah, okay. We made it to 64 now, if I do the offset of 100. Is there a header? It, like tells the length or something? to there if I do 100. Okay, so what if I do 10? And don't mess it up this time. PC is 8. 
Interesting. Okay, so maybe you just multiply by two. Does that fit with what we saw before? It's eight. Let's just, let's mask the hex 20 instruction. Masking. But we also don't know if like, it's not like going a few more Seventeen. No, it's kind of useless. Okay, maybe not. Think of multiple cores or something. Why are there multiple of them? Oh, these are fake. What is execute control? I feel like this is useful. Zero. K Beagle Scalar Core CSR Offsets. This thing's insanely complex. Op Enable Tracing. Are these things ever used? Like Tile Performance Tracing. I mean, that's what I was trying there, yeah, but like it wasn't obvious. Hmm. This is insanely complicated. What hope do we have, boys? What hope do we have? Construction hmm. queue. I try changing that, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't seem disabled or anything, it just doesn't do anything. Uh, What are all these things that are being enabled? What is this? Members are intentionally named to match the GCSR register names. Okay. Oh, this is some PCIe garbage. I forgot this chip has PCIe as well. Boot failures. Wait until 
little tile config zero. What's a tile? What's a hib? This is more complex than the Apple Neural Engine. What if we make some guesses? What if we think that this instruction is a knob, is a, is a loop forever, right? Wouldn't that make sense? That's, that's what you end your program with? Are there any other CO zero Fs in the program? No. But every program seems to end with that. So let's just try it. Let's try inserting it at places and seeing what we get. Um, let's call this instruction end. And let's manually add slash x's here because we're lazy. Okay, colon uh, s slash space slash 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 x slash g. Yeah, it looks good. Go back to doing this. Let's see what that does. No, it's definitely a program. That gets to 17, which is actually where it got to last time. to eight if I change that one. Let's try 30. That does nothing. I'm not sure I'm actually doing that right. I'm inserting it correctly. Okay, that just doesn't seem to matter then. Maybe that's a maybe there's a jump. Actually, what if the first instruction's a jump? Maybe that's a not. Maybe that's just not a not a real instruction. It's definitely not an FPGA config file. This is definitely a uh, sequentially executing program. Okay, it gets to forty-seven if I do that. Enabling the single step step stuff would be a big win. Figure out how to do that. <coughs> Some 
Survivor bug report for Scalar Core. It would make sense to me that Scalar Core run control, Scalar Core breakpoint, all zeros. Show one's done. Type error. Okay, that doesn't work. Show fours. Well, it's got to be. Context can't, this isn't real. We can look at SC memory access, SC data. Maybe I have to enable something for these? All zeros. Debug CSR. Okay. There's tile also. Instruction queue. I don't know. Why don't we look at the instruction queue size? Does any instruction queue size? Uh, the ones that begin with four are the ones that we put uh, zero, yeah. No instruction queue size. They don't seem to do anything. Uh, we have more information on these. Okay, method select. Thermal warning. That looks really boring. More thermal warning garbage. Okay. Maybe we go through these and we try knocking them out and seeing which ones we don't need. Oh, well, actually. What are these SCU controls? It seems like there's a lot of stuff there. What is an SCU? Programming the SCU in Beagle. The block containing state machines to control boot and power sequences. PLL clock, single exit, single link, sleep check. I don't think it's any of those. Bunch of boring resets. And no more stuff to do with that. Okay. Um. If regnum BREC plus one
just script endpoint multi bo endpoint outfield chunk length scalar core run control Delete these from here. Okay, it still works. Now, here's a question. What if I don't write scalar core run control? Does it still work? No, it doesn't. So you did have to write that. That didn't matter. Um, what if instead of writing one, we write three? which should be single step. Hmm, okay. So if we write single step instead of writing, uh, instead of writing one, it doesn't work. So that's good. Maybe you can only write scalar core run control once. Now let's just figure out how to use the single step mode. K move to idle, K move to run, K move to halt, K move to single step. Okay. Is this used anywhere? I need a logic here for single stepping. What if I do this? Does that work? That works fine. If I do that, that works fine too. Interesting. But if I do that, it doesn't work. How do I trigger the single step? Move to single step. And is it possible that I like send this? Let's see if PC changes at all. No, nothing. Uh, what'd you find? Yeah, I know there's like no information on this thing. Yeah, I saw this. This is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read that. There's like no real information. Okay. Um, okay, we're putting the core in single step mode now. That seems to be working. Now, how do I actually, uh, We will idle register, blah, 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 enable reset, boring, 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 enable actual sleep mode. Maybe something in the section describing interrupts? Where are the interrupts? I want to like say step. How do I say step? Can I check run status and like, does it work? Oh, we have a run status now. Four. What's four? K halted. Why did it go into K single step? K. Now the status is zero. What zero is the status? K idle. Oh, I have an idea. Okay. What if I don't send any run control? What does it do? Nothing. Can I download the program? This downloads the program. Download the program. And then run it. Does that work? Okay, 
that works. Uh, what happens if I check the status there? What do I get? Ah, one. Okay, one is k run. Now, if I change this to this, will it go into k single step? Come on, three. Four! Oh. I want to double check on that e fuse that single steps not disabled. Is that what that bit field means? Because that'd be really annoying. Like if it was like actually that just might be single step disabled. Well, that sucks. But it's cool that we can uh, it's possible it's just disabled, which would just suck. All right, like depending on the endianness of that, you see what I'm saying? Uh, all right, what if I tell it to halt really fast? What do I got? It still makes it to 66, and now I'm in status three. Okay, halting. Load a few more. Mm, halting, very slow. Halting, very slow. Thank you. I'll be back one minute, switches. Game. All right, so that's sad. When we put it in single step mode, it actually just goes into halted mode, which is uh, very depressing. But it does run, which is good. I think it's just disabled. It's gonna stay at 66 now? No, moving to idle doesn't work. But moving to halt does. Yeah, okay, now it halts at 66. Right, even after I send the stuff. Yeah, I think it's uh, disabled at a hardware level. No, is it E-Fuse? I mean, it would make sense for them to disable it, right? This is the exact sort of thing they, they you know, maybe don't want us doing. Like, I think I just read it wrong, right? Because, like, if you assume that it's, like, big Endian, the first... Uh, by is zero, which says that it's disabled. Okay, I mean, there is hope. There's also breakpoints. We can try that. 
Okay, scalar core breakpoint. What do you think? Oh. Scalar core run status. Wait, no, no, no. That's just the halted garbage. Seems like breakpoints are broken as well. Once you get this four out of this. Oh. Weird. So if I set it to one, it halts. Maybe that's like an enable? Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that! Okay, now current PC is one. So if we assume that scalar core breakpoint, like the first bit is whether it's enabled, and then the second bit is where it actually gets to, right? So you have to like shift it over one. You see what I'm saying? Uh, let me just... So if I do something like Q of, um, we want to do like 20, shift, shift, left one or one. All right, this should stop at PC 20. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, buddy. All right, we got some. Breakpoints work. So they disabled single stepping. Oh, they got us. But they didn't disable breakpoints. Okay. Now can I undisable the breakpoint? Let's try that. Killer core run status is three. Object of int has no len. We write scale core breakpoint, but now let's set run again. Unset breakpoint run. Okay. Well, that sucks. Since we're in that state, it doesn't seem like we can get out of it, even if we disable the breakpoint. Yeah, so it's in this like halting state, is what it says. Is there a delay needed? Try it. Mm. It's very fast, I haven't needed any delays for anything. Uh, but okay, that's interesting that that gets to 20, right? So whatever it is, we have a, the breakpoints are working. I'm also a little worried that this thing is a scalar core. Like where are these other cores? Like what's a TTU breakpoint activation? It's all scary, man. How to wait until halted? Oh, you think you think if I just wait, it'll eventually halt? I don't think so. I think it just stays in this halting state. 
We can wait a bit, but no, it's all threes. Well, actually, here's something interesting. When I reset it, it works, right? Like when I run it again now, we, we can repeat the same thing, which means that like something we're doing has to, has to reset it. Oh, we're actually calling USB reset. No, 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 we're, we're, we're breaking the meta. Um, But when is lunch time? Yeah, that's a good question. All right, here's a fun fact. Let's try to set the breakpoint to like six, let's set it to like 70 or 80, 80 is good. Okay, as long as we don't hit the breakpoint, it's fine. Let's see if we hit the breakpoint now. Yeah, we do, look, we hit it, 80. How do we resume? Maybe execute control? What is execute control? Do we set it to anything? It seems like I don't know anything about it. I don't know. You wanna just try poking one in execute control and seeing if it works? Wait. Oh no, I have the breakpoint still at 80. No. Mm, okay, the one stayed around and execute control. Execute control lets me read and write it. Uh, scalar core run status. Okay, I have an idea. What if I set that back to zero? Nope, still threes. Mm, if I set it to two? Still threes. If I set it to three? It makes sense that you poke the run control, right? But there is a question of, yeah, why is it in a halting state and not, a, how about resetting all the initial registers? I don't think it's any of these. Uh, I mean, okay, what's the idle register? It's the only one that like sticks out at me. There's a whole debugger in this thing. Scalar core run control, scalar core run status, scalar core breakpoint.
Okay, move to halt. Okay, move to run. I have to like clear the interrupt, do I not? to talk about interrupts. Interrupt count, tunnel interrupt. Fatal error, interrupt. Fatal error interrupt. Uh, host int, top level int. Uh, the reason I don't think that the register thing is going to work is because the I'm actually issuing a USB reset uh, here, and that's what's fixing it, not anything else. Should order lunch? I should order lunch. My phone. Buy my phone and order lunch. Ooh. You guys feeling this stream? Is this exciting? I don't know. The thing is, the stuff's like addictive and it never gets you anywhere. Oh, let's check error scalar core. I feel like we have to clear some interrupt and then onset the breakpoint. No error scalar core. All right, we'll let everyone talk for a little bit. Yo, chill guys, if you start talking about dumb shit. Uh, okay, that's in the hib. I don't think it's in the hib. Uh, tracing. Bunch of counters. host control I don't think so did I check that one already I see host and status I 
think it's Q and control. Well, why do you think it's the Q? I mean, it's possible that it's some undefined thing in run control. Like it's something like we have to send it like five or something. Like something like that. Like when it when it hits the breakpoint. Can someone give him a summary? I gotta find my phone and we gotta order food. and avocado toast. Mm. All right. Can I make a memory dump? Uh, I mean, it's not a bad thought. I, I don't really even know how to do that. Like you just send in the data, you just send in the program to like some USB endpoint and it just kind of runs it. Oh man, you know, I check an email, I get some emails that piss me off, man. You know, some like corporate governance shit. Look, you know, I think that people took this also like, like, fuck The Verge, man. That article is completely wrong. Uh, you know, but hey man, Dunning Kruger or whatever. Uh, Alt F4 doesn't work on Mac, bro. You know, like, I'm just, I'm so much happier doing this than, like, these are the forms for the employee health plan? Oh. You know, we got some avocado toast, some acai ball coming. Uh, there's a line in a Watsky song, I'm done being a bitch to ambition, I'm already rich. You know? Got to head this full of million dollar questions. And the length of this, I don't need the courage to work. I want the strength to quit. Jesus. <laughs> 
Uh, what? Guys, there's a great team at Como. You know, oh, I'm, I'm sick of saying this, man. We pop out at your party. I'm with the gang. And this gonna be a robbery. So tuck your chain. Who else hates the media, man? Journalists. Instruction cue control. Okay, that's four and it's still four. So that's not that useful. Huh. Run status is four? It's halted, and then it goes to like kind of halted. Oh, that's instruction queue control. Let's read instruction queue status. Goes from zero to zero. Great, useless. Uh, deploy lawyers on the verge. No, like, look, I told the guy to call me. I'm like, well, your was bullshit. And he's like, you know, honestly, they just don't care, man. What am I going to do? So I don't care, man. All press is good press, kids. So if you want to see me gone, then I suggest you keep my name out of your headlines. Right? How could I be with, be without your hate? It gives me peace of mind. I love that song. Will Google TPU support really move TinyGrad forward? Oh, 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 you progressive piece of shit, man. Moving forward, we gotta move the world forward, man. You moving the world forward, bro. I, uh, oh, oh, wig history, you know? Um. I mean, yeah, docking stones, you're right, you're right. Oh, man, you know. Some people, like, believe the media. And they're looking at Apple Silicon. Oh, we're, we're looking at Apple Silicon. Oh, yeah, like, that's not a forward-looking statement, guys. You know, like, 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 you're the reason, you know, all this shit is the reason I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I, I, I told you, it really is about the users. It really is about like, like, and I'm, I'm not really that different, right? I, I use the same when I use consumer electronics, but, uh, No, are you looking at are you looking at it? Yeah. You, you can read my comments and looking at you know, I'm looking at a lot of things, right? Like I'm running my M1 right now. Like it's not like this stuff matters, okay? Like Oh I don't wanna go do I wanna like tell you all something real? Um Do I wanna tell you all something real? Where is my, oh, instruction queue in status. That, that seems hopeful, right? There's some bit being set. No, you wanna just dump all the registers? We could just dump them all. Uh, yeah, be careful with your wording, that's right. No, look, like, I think we gotta go back to subscriber only. The subscribers have all figured out how not to trigger me, man. Should we dump all the registers? Oh, wait. 
You know what occurs to me? Current PC. Can I set it? We were always trying to, we were always trying to, uh, it's like set it to 21. Can't set it. What if I set it and then I read it? Brush to the left or right hand. You remember on the stream when we talk about how we're not doing anything like we're not doing any like 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 it would just like like what are you trying to accomplish right like this, this whole way of thinking like we're, we're we're learning man but that even like that's even like oh you're trying to accomplish learning oh let me find the most efficient way to learn yeah uh, yeah we're just yeah we're just vibing man oh, optimization Die, man. I'm gonna die. Ah. What's the hymn? Oh. Wait, this is cool. Scale a register file. Wait, this is exciting. Does this let me dump all the registers? All right, let's not set any breakpoints for now. Let's just run it. Like this is a setting of a scalar register. Uh, knowledge is controversy, circles me, so it seems like a media immediately. Uh, let's, let's just add a flag to read register called offset. Gonna show me another register? The same register. Hmm. Hmm. Well, actually, I don't know if that's the same register. Could be a different register. Let's try a little loop. Is that a special value? I've never seen that before. Is it actually sending that or did I did I mess up? Um, it looks like Greg knows what's actually sent. Yeah, PC goes to 173 and we don't stop, which, like, again, it's not the end of this program. Um, you know, if we multiply 173 by 10, we get 80, 0, which is here. Maybe that's the halt instruction? 
And those are just knobs, and that's like some weird preamble. All right, let's do a little surgery. Let me, let me try something. Let's try prog equals prog sub. First off, if that's true, then we shouldn't need anything after that, right? So let's make a slightly shorter program. Now that didn't work. You <laughs> shouldn't 380 channel points on that, bro. Uh, I'm a little bit upset. I was more excited when I thought it was actually gonna read me a whole register file, but it actually just reads me one register. Um, As you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. So I hope this lesson is helpful. Oh wait, it's dead beef? Oh, that's cool. I don't know, I mean. Scale register file. It's, it's not. It's not that, oh, I don't know. Actually, maybe that's a halt instruction. Oh, let's, let's send this here. Mm, no, the same. Let me just see, did I, did I mess up the offset thing? No, that works fine. And then for some reason, so where did we try to clamp the program? If we do that, it just doesn't work at all, but, so there's like a length the program has to be maybe? Uh, times hex print x len prog that's so weird so if I get rid of the end of the program just this end part here it uh doesn't even run at all. Do I can I get to my breakpoint at twenty? Can't even get to my breakpoint at twenty. Which is weird. Is the last thing like a checksum or something?
I'm going to try copying the last few bytes exactly as they are. I don't know. Let's try some... Try that. Okay, well, that just breaks it entirely. What if I just take away the last hex 10? Breaks it entirely. I'm not like doing anything stupid, right? Like, this should work. Try surgically removing the stuff at hex 40. Nothing. So what if I add another one of these ends to it? That works. And that's get that used to be 173, right? Interesting. Oh, is that what you're saying? Oh. So what if I do something like this, but instead do like n times five? Let me see if that works. Interesting. Okay. Let's chomp back further. Weird. So it behaves differently, look. It goes to 184 and it keeps the light blinking. So that last instruction must be to turn things off. And I don't really understand why this like footer needs to be there, but whatever, it's something that like makes the USB happy. Okay, this is the real, um, we'll call this pad. Uh, for, uh, let's see, let's just write a quick function called fix x dot split, uh, ox plus x int or x in x dot split. Let's Uh, let's go here and let's put end pad five. All right. Well, that's the same program, so that doesn't actually change anything. Okay, cool. Uh, let's add one more end earlier. Now, my prediction is that this is gonna get to 172. Yeah, 172, take a look. Now it didn't actually reply with anything because that other, that penultimate instruction had to have been important as well. This instruction. Oh, but we're getting somewhere. Is 173 just the length of the program? No, it's not the length of the program, okay? So, Hang on, let me modify this a tiny bit. Uh,
568. Is that what we expect to see? Five sixty-eight? No, that's not right. Oh, did I multiply by ten? Why did I multiply by eight? Why don't you guys yell at me, George? Why do you multiply by eight? You have to multiply by hex ten. Okay, good, good. Okay, now we know where we're getting to in the program, and the program is stopping here at AD zero. Uh, just for the fun of it, let's set a. Uh, Breakpoint at well, what happens if I set the breakpoint at 80 0 uh, over 8? That's actually going to get hit. Um, we should also read this. Actually, let's not set the breakpoint. Let's see what's left. Okay. Scalar core run stat is 0, which is idle. Um, now, if I set a breakpoint, I expect that the light's going to keep blinking. Nope, breakpoint did nothing. Okay, let's set the breakpoint one before that. Oh, did I not do my parens right? I'm just gonna not do my parens right. Nope, nothing. Uh, let's try A0. Nothing. Interesting. Set the breakpoint back at 20. Current PC gets to 20. 40. Guys, I wrote divided by eight again. Don't let me write this. There are hex 10 instructions. Notice that, wait, did the light stay on last time too? Same. Okay, there we go, now it's different. Because right, now we're getting a four there, which means it didn't actually get to that instruction. Um, so maybe this isn't actually the halt instruction. Maybe this is the halt instruction. No, but it's interesting that that one's different. It, okay, that PC basically stops uh, at eighty zero. It stops here. Um, so if I set breakpoints after that, they don't do anything. I don't exactly understand why things have to be, yeah, stop dividing by eight, right? I don't exactly understand why things have to be padded the way they do. Too bad dumping the register file doesn't work. Oh, you know what that might be? That again might be bullshit where it's like, stop. you're right, it is dead beef, right? Like what if they disabled it? Let's go back to that eFuse register and see what else they could disable. Why would they disable my single step? Or do we just not know how to use it? Uh, this is disabled, mbist is disabled. Uh, I think single step, I don't know. I don't actually know if single step's disabled. But like we're making some good progress now. Well here, so you wanna try something like this? That could actually just be anything. I don't know. Useless. My Uber Eats here. Almost here. They get a tip if they bring it to my door. They don't get a tip if they don't bring it to my door. Am I an unreasonable, terrible person for that? <laughs> well, I wouldn't care if I was unreasonable because I'm doing it anyway. <laughs>
No tips all the time. That's that's bold, bro. That's bold. I I, I can respect that too. I, I like a tip to be for performance. If I have to come down to the street and meet you, there's no fucking way you're getting a tip. I don't like that it tries to get you to put the tip beforehand. Yeah, it's a good service. I think that's right. Oh, I like bringing it to my door. And I have clear instructions about how to get into my apartment and bring the thing in. Exactly. Exactly. Wow, there's so many things. AV data, parameter, in feed, out feed. I feel like we're not gonna really like make too much progress on this unless we like. <laughs> Spend a ton of time. Okay, this is the compiler that's capable of outputting these things. So all the secrets do lie in this thing. There's like no documentation. I don't know what a DWL is. This is this is the compiler. This is the edge D, uh, edge TPU compiler that outputs these things. Okay, here's an idea. I'm 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 running out of. Uh, sometimes what you hope is that people left good stuff in older versions of things. So let's find the old version. Can we pause the compiler? Oh, uh, well, we, we, I mean, we can get to actively, we, we can get to doing a uh, like dynamic analysis on the compiler too. But again, there's a question of how far we wanna go with this. All right, all right, the tips thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, got, we got to go back there. Um, let's take a look here. Something called Pi Coral, which is a whole other thing. I, there's a chance. Let's just look in here. Maybe there's magical documentation in here. Imagine there was magical documentation in here. Bundle bin libedge TPU. Okay, those are just the built ones. No, 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 no. Lib coral. Oh, what is, that? is that a submodule? What's lib coral? Convenience function on device transfer learning. What's that? Let's call my food here.
Mm. Sad looking avocado toast. Let's see. That's taking forever. How big is test data? Huge. What do you think I am? Made of uh check libcore. Maybe there's some hope in libcore. Pi coral seems useless. No, I'll just live edge TPU in there. No, there's not gonna be there. Bundle ALU move I. Let's see where these things are used. This links in with an address. It doesn't really show me anything good. Bundle ALU move I. Man, why doesn't Google just release this? Somewhere deep in here is like the IR and the whole representation of all this stuff. Like we know that that instruction is a move I and move I doesn't even exist in here. <laughs> the full power of the edge TPU. All four teraflops.
Okay, there are older versions of the compiler than the one in this repo. Actually, it's unclear if they were ever released openly, though. It's crazy that the older compilers are way smaller. Let's go back to the old one. See how different the code looks. Does it still work? Well, we get internal compiler error aborting. It wasn't capable of uh, compiling that very difficult times two. Tmov. Do we still have Tmov? Tmov's gone. Where's my oh, here it is. Import file. We also got acai bowl. Carbs and sugar. Can you overclock it? You can, uh, yeah, there's two things you can do the, yeah, I mean, I'm sure I can up the clock speed. They also create two versions of the binary, one throttled and one not throttled. Question. How many people were on the team at Google that made this thing? I don't think it was five. So I have another idea too. Um, there's, this is what the real uh, TPU like, if I just had this, this is the VLIW instruction for the big TPU. All I need is this, but for the little TPU. Because without this, it's really hard. 
like I'm, I'm staring at these instructions and like we can try twiddling the bits and seeing what we get. But without having an idea even of like which parts apply to which parts. So this thing has multiple units, right? The units are all listed in, in Edge TPU. Um, like it has a scalar unit and a, a TTU. The big TTU one has a TTU as well. I'd love to know what a TTU is. I would work on a driver for the big TPU, but the problem is you can't buy them. Oh. I mean, this is interesting. It does seem like there's... It does seem like there's other uh, strings in here. Cannot match hardware TTU configuration. I, I think TTU is a generic acronym. Man, imagine when you Googled, you didn't find. Operations research sat. Okay, it has a built in sat solver. That's great. We have to find the one they accidentally built with all the debug symbols. You know what's nice about reverse engineering this? It has no value to any nation state. That's what made like the iPhone and the web browser stuff shitty. Because it actually had like value. Two time scale update? No, I don't think it's that. It doesn't seem right.
<laughs> well, do the non-subscribers have any useful insights? The thing has an entire code generator. We need a disassembler. There is an old ARM sixty four compiler on their GitHub. Yeah, you think that's better? I, mean, I don't understand why they drop ARM64 some more. Yeah, it is somewhat interesting they removed it. Okay. Let's take a look. So you see if I go back to Deploria 2. Yeah, ARM64. Maybe there's secrets in it. Just more readable. I like this one's just hard to read. Move I is the best thing I've seen. We just need more things like that. Well, there's not even gonna be like leaks of this stuff. You know, whenever there's Qualcomm, there's always leaks because it's given to partners. Google didn't give this to anybody. looks the same.
We wasted a lot of time on this compiler yesterday, and we made no progress. You know, I'd say this code is obfuscated, but it's actually probably just written in C++. <laughs> Which, is there really a difference? Okay, none of these are in... All right, guys. Did I try searching for it in strings? Um. I mean, yeah, we're looking through the strings. I don't know. I kind of feel like this compiler is a dead end. Like it contains all the secrets, but good luck getting them out. I generally find black box stuff is uh, better. At least if you have a fixed amount of time. I'm sure to get like the last bit of everything. That's an air conditioning guy, I think it's cold, but um Acai ball. You're hungry. See you, Vibester. Thanks for your help. Just fuzz the device to get the instructions set. Well, the problem is the instructions are really long. We have one instruction figured out, and it's this one. And this one is a ALU move I. These are interesting. Do you know what these are? I know what these are. That is a, it's like minus one, right? So at least we can tell kind of what the groupings are. The DKMS drivers. I doubt it. Well, hmm. Okay. Good find. Yeah, no, they're not totally useless. So I think these are the registers. These are the same registers, right? If, if we take a look. They call them bar two. But I think like they're the same registers as, as these, right? If we look at something like um, Right, so like, yeah, D4 here is. Kind of interesting too that they have more E fuses. You see how you just maps it literally to the computer.
Yeah, make multiple TF white files and diff the output. So we did that. Like, I have a whole thing to do that. And this is this is how I made progress with the uh, with the Apple Neural Engine. The problem here is like, we have this huge amount of boilerplate. And until we make some progress understanding what this boilerplate is, I feel that um, maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe I just shouldn't care. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's something we can do. Mm, not even that sounds annoying. See if the Deploria 3 one works. You want to try emailing these guys? Maybe they want to give us some documentation. <laughs> Yo, bros, can I have some documentation? I'm trying to use the Coral chip. Oh, good. This one doesn't right away crash. B. Wait, this is shorter. Still have, did I leave the eight in there? Yeah, generate something totally different. This old version thing doesn't seem like a good use of time.
it gets annoying also, like, something I didn't want to have to deal with. 9 Tag, another reason I don't just want to start. I, mean, I guess we could do all the scalar ones, but the scalar ones aren't that different. Um, because if you start adding in weights, it becomes a lot. So like, okay, what if I do times two plus one? No, I don't think it is that. Like, th there is a risk core on the chip. Uh, we'll call this mul2 add one dot core. like the scales thing. Like add 10. So another problem with this is these TensorFlow things don't actually, they don't actually like map uh, exactly because of these scale things and we'd have to like figure all that out. Okay, well, this like added something. All right, uh, you wanna compare mul2 add 10 with div2. Uh, I should compare it with div2 8. Oh, well, okay, we learned something. Look at this. That's the length. It's interesting you have to multiply that by four too, which tells you something about the offsets. Look at that, that's the length of the code. That must like set up the scalar core to run that, and that's why we were having trouble every time we were changing the length. Or that's just some header that has nothing even to do with the code. No, but it's an instruction. I don't think it's a header. I mean, it's possible, it's like a jump. Doesn't seem right. Yeah, it must like command the scalar core into a... Uh... We still end with that same preamble.
probably like work on like trying to do like alignment, you know? There's like good compare tools to do this for you, is there not? Okay, like look, this is just that, right? Go back even further. C O B B is just that. Yeah, so it's like this is what was inserted. Like that's a block that does uh, that does the ad. Well, wow, that's a lot of code to do an ad. See, this is look, look. I added literally one ad. I added an ad, and it added all this code. Um, though it's possible it has to do with the scaling. so much complexity here. are different. It's weird because they don't look different. Oh, the end ones. <coughs> the end ones are different. Um, Do we really still get dead beef when we dump those registers? other register files too we can try. It's the predicate register file. Also dead beef. Hmm. I wonder if you do this up here. Anything different? Interesting. It's maybe you just can't read them while it's running. read them before you're running, you get nothing. If you read them here, you get dead beef. What if I set a breakpoint? Say a 80. No. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you add show operations, so I actually already have that. It's also just dash s. Uh, it's just this. Wait, here's an idea. What if I halt the core? We never tried that. Okay. Wait, can I halt the core after I hit a breakpoint? Or does that just get stuck on? Oh, guys. Guys, look at that. Wait, hang on. Look at that four. We read something from the register file. We halted the chip and we read something from the register file. Watch this, I have an idea now. I think that if I set some of those here, let's try like, let's set uh, 49. Hex 49. Let's go like some AA there. AA show up in one of the registers. Oh, jackpot. Jackpot. We dumped a register. All right. All right. We ready to get control over the scalar unit? The breakpoint puts it into some weird state. But if I manually halt the core, that is what I put in, sort of, but good enough. The register I said is register one, and that's register one, right? Prediction, you wanna change this one? If I set register two, it'll change that one. So this is a scalar load. Well, move I, ALU move I. But it set this register and we can now dump it now that we hold the core. The core is getting stuck in that halted in that state with the breakpoint. Cool, so something else must be setting this to four by the time we get to PC 420. Um, let me go back to this program, it didn't matter. So let's see if we can find what sets it to four. Well, which register is that first of all? That's register 48 divided by eight, nine. Uh, and PC gets to 420. So if it's here, so what's hitting register nine?
Maybe this one. There's nine. Oh, and there's the four. So this is uh, is setting register nine. These load into register zero, one, two, three. All right, I think that's pretty good progress for today. Um, I think the next things to do would be to start breaking down. Okay, there, there's a lot we can do with 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 just what we have. Um, we can work out, for example, the length of the register. So the fact that there's 20 registers tells us something about uh, about the bytes. And the fact that this one is supposed to go to bit 0.75. Again, I don't know if the bits are big endian or little endian. Uh, well, okay, how many registers are there? There's 32 registers. So that's represented by five bits. You see what I mean? Like we could figure, we could start figuring out like which bits correspond to which thing. Um, these ones, why didn't these loads happen? Right, how come these loads didn't show up in the, uh, Oh, those might not be loads, right? Because those are Bs there. Those might not be loads. Um, it seems like everything in these instructions is bit packed as well. So we'll have to start looking at what the bits are. Uh, let's try just for fun. Let's try, what if I put more AAs? interesting right it looks like the register is not it looks like it's only uh, 32 bits despite it reading more well, maybe you can't actually read more or maybe that's the next register now that one's called one Let me modify this as well So this is this register here, it's set there, but not all the uh, bits are getting through. Maybe for a scalar register file, I actually only read four. Not bus error, no, all right. Oh, are those ones always there? One of them was, oh, it must be some, so this must be some function of, uh, of these. All right, we can figure out which is doing it. A8 divided by eight, 21, so 15. So if we go back to this, we find like which one of these has a five, maybe this one. Yeah, but this stuff is controlling the scalar unit and those are move eyes. So we could figure out how the whole scalar unit works. Then we can start figuring out how the other units work. They weren't there when I only had the AA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, one of them was, I went back. All right, so if we go here where I only had the AA, just that one gets set. And then this one gets set if I set the BBs there. Uh, so those are just some like function of the thing. Oh, you know what's possible? Um, 
Let me try something. It's too bad we can't make the breakpoints work. Uh, okay, so PC is only getting to 80 now because we put the uh, we put break there. All right, so now we we, we basically stop the program here, which is fine. Uh, I assume that this is not. Do something like prog equals prog. I think we need the header. But then maybe we can put in three knobs. This is uh, this is something else, because we're stopping the program here now, and we're still getting this behavior. All right, that's just those, just just this. So it must have to do with the fact that I have more A's and B's and stuff. What if I set those to zero? So these ones gonna change? Yeah, look, they don't do it now. So that must be some other weird stuff. Uh, that thing describes the format. Yeah, yeah, I'm already parsing that. I'm already completely parsing that. You, you get out a blob. Uh, you get out like a, like a binary blob. Um, yeah, but you see now, now look, I'm only running this program here. Uh, and it's loading in these registers. So that works. Yeah, uh, I'll show you. Look, I actually have this in, in my thing. The thing that actually matters is an instruction bitstream, this. Encoded bitstream for a real hardware uh, is where it matters. Okay, so I think the thing that we'd want to do is completely characterize the scalar unit by playing with the different things and seeing what different behaviors we get, right? There's only so many things a scalar unit can do. Uh, there are there is documentation it is it is the the TPU and edge TPU do seem to share quite a bit um, no nah, there's like better ones of these yeah I didn't do that on stream I, I did that last night Each TPU core has three types of processing. Well, I'm here, we, we can look. Oh, you know, maybe, maybe they're maybe they're the same. We'll see like how much is taken from the TPU, right? So like here's their scalar unit, right? Um they have a Y, X, Desp, Op. So I bet these are very similar. Uh, and they also have a predicate. There might even be two scalar units. Uh, there's also, yeah, like this is an immediate. I can tell that the program is much shorter. This seems to be some like initialization for the instruction unit because uh, we need it. If we get rid of it, it doesn't run anymore. Um, but like here, we can try some targeted shit. Like, let's just get rid of that two there. Let's 
see if it still works. I wonder if it verifies that that thing actually contains. It might verify that it actually, because I, I, when I try removing this thing, it might actually verify that that thing's there. Uh, you know what? Okay, let's go back to doing that. And then let's replace the whole rest of the program. It's just like, you know what an op slide is? instructions are there? More than 20, right? You can just spam end everywhere though, right? Uh, let's see, it's like B, should work. No, this doesn't look right. This is not the program, oh. Doesn't run. Uh, no, it's pad. It's the actual last thing that matters, this one. I called it pad. I didn't mean to call it end. Let's do prog plus end followed by a lot of pads. Okay, that runs, cool. Uh, now I should be able to surgically remove that top zero. We have a better syntax for this. Okay, that works. Cool. Um, so that's the length, and it just has to detect this has to be at the end of it, right? You can see the kind of symmetry there, right? This is the beginning. Uh, this is the end. So there we go. That's a program that we're currently executing on the uh, edge DPU. It's a custom program that we wrote. And then we read from the scalar register file and we confirm that our load eyes actually worked. Okay, so the next thing to do is to start to figure out the, the bit layout of the instruction. Characterize the scalar unit, and then we can disassemble all the scalar instructions that we have. Uh, does this sound fun, guys? Does this sound fun? All right, we got a lot of viewers. All right, this sounds fun then. stretch a little, get chill for a little bit, because we're undertaking a large endeavor.
the tiny core pie of our personal feel good coach. Yo, you know what I realized? My friend gave me some real insight to something. Everyone who like says that they're a life coach and shit, that's just a euphemism for a hooker, man. Like you got all these pretty girls and they're life coaches. And I'm like, who's paying you? Who's paying you for to be a life coach, right? Like, like, like. I look, I look. I'm not, not, no disrespect, no disrespect, but like, come on. And then I realized it. They're hookers, and then it all made sense. No, bro, life coach is a real profession, bro. White Lotus, you guys, you see the new White Lotus? I love that. I love that. <laughs> but, but like the world's ending. Oh, don't be silly. The world's not ending. We don't even watch the news. They're, they're just trying to like get you caught up in their apocalyptic soap opera. Yeah, the charging for blue checks not a smart move. Uh, all right. Bitstruct. Is this? Is this what I want? Just hookers, man. You guys know what I want? Like, I, I feel like I've seen this in Python before. Maybe someone knows. Like, I want something that can do like structs, but at the bit level. Python have a bit field type. C types. Bit array was the best answer I found. Sufficiently represents an array of booleans. Uh, including slice assignment and deletion. Bit vector. NumPy has an array interface. If your bit field is short, you can probably use a struct module. No. Mm. Range set. Cati. New way to develop parsers for binary structures. Oh, this looks way too heavyweight. I need a struct compiler. Like, yeah, it's probably good, but. I almost like this.
We'll just do this. Use the C types. Um, okay. Decompiler.py. Let's go. No more promises. I have made them before and broken them. Who wants to listen to copyrighted music? Is it copyrighted music time? You know, Taylor Swift is super copyrighted. There's no way we can listen to Taylor Swift. Bro, Taylor Swift herself will come be upset with me if we listen to our copyrighted music on stream. Uh, Kanye might not. Kanye might be like, bro, bro, you're still bumping Kanye? Oh, that's cool, bro. That's cool, bro. I bump Kanye too, man. Want to come to one of my parties sometime? Yo, we just listen to my music. All we do is listen to my music. Uh, bytes to int. Little. Little. Okay. Um. Who said you won't need your times tables later in life? Whoever told you that, they were a liar. If I knew my times tables, I could have done that math in my head. Unfortunately, I didn't pay attention in elementary school. And now I don't know my times tables. Uh, so that's a lesson, kids. That's a lesson. Number of bits invalid for bit fields. Oh no. No. Okay, good. Okay, it's like five. Call this. And I should steal the names from uh another one here. Call it like S1X or something. And then we have immediate. Uh, call that unc0. Oh, another one called unc0 here. Um, where we go? X3. Then we have immediate and that's 32. Um, and then we got to make sure this all adds up. I wish I could go back to college. In college, you know who you are. That's kind of. 
time. What? Didn't even work. Oh, guess we gotta do uh, int dot from bytes stats of i i plus ten. Uh, little is it little or big? Uh, the big any instruction we need right there. Uh, argument out of range. Don't argue with me out of range. What? Oh, what is this? Oh, that's not right. Um, No, we got a keyboard question. Got to go back. And you guys are talking about some like BlackRock conspiracy theories. All right, pack into format buffer. And write the pack buffs talking into blah 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 blah. Oh, that's not really right. Um. No, how do I get stuff with a bigger size? The problem is that none of this supports large enough things. And I have an idea that that one spans across. Maybe it doesn't. Not happy about this. Not happy about this. Python bit structure. No, okay, actually, I think there's an easy way to do this. I think instead of saying struct pack into, uh, there's just a buffer, right? So I can like mem copy it? No, uh, what does pack into do? Writable buffer starting at position offset uh, for j in range 10, uh, cs sub j equals that I have a question. C struct does not support item assignment. It's a writable buffer, is it not? Right buffer. Oh, are you looking for construct? What is this? Collaboration? I don't like that already. Thing looks very heavyweight. Structure. I mean, I know that's kind of cool. Ah, right. uh, declarative. Blah, 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 blah. Big byte duality. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, all right, all right, all right, we're gonna give this a try. Hip install construct. Um, um construct and for it struct. Uh, 
D dot R subscribe that so forty to fifty. Oh, I think oh I'm very excited. Oh, I hope this works. Come on. Uh five pound four. Okay, that's fine. Double D's. Oh yeah, all right, that's something. Um, thank you, thank you for the suggestion on Construct. This looks good. This is backward or something. Right, because that should be 60 to there, and then it should be as zero should be like one, two, three. But I'm sure that way to flip them. Bit structs are not nestable. Feels like it can do both. Put it in onk, which probably is not right. Sixty. No, that's not what I want. The ending. This is like. Uh, okay. I mean, this is a more fundamental issue. It's backwards, but then we have to like do it all backwards. You see the problem? It's like backwards, we have to do it backwards. So it actually looks more like this. There you go, okay. Now they're in the right place. Um, how did I write it for the TPU one? And I'm just, I'm kind of just guessing now, but. Okay, and then we know something about this as well. Uh, we know that that's a length, and we know that that corresponds uh, to C4, we have to multiply that by four, which means we just have to go a few more there, okay. So if that's five, I wonder how big that can get. It can probably get really big. Uh, 
Well, let's just work backwards, okay? So if that's gonna be four, then that's gonna have that many there. So that's 16 plus six is 22. Um, Okay, and then this is going to be 60 minus 32 minus 22. So what's that leave us with? I don't want to assert the whole thing adds up. Is there a way to do that? Uh, size of? Sixteen. I mean, it'd be nicer if that was in uh, bits, but it's all settled. B10. Okay, good. So that works. Um, now we can start writing our own programs. Uh, yeah, so the field offset, I, I, the field offset is how I get the blue ones. Um, I have some information from that. But yeah, so if we say something like ins uh, unc zero equals, and it's interesting that the size is b10, which is actually minus two, okay. size equals hex 30. Transform object is not callable uh, dot build. Uh, missing one required position argument. What? Oh, does it be a dictionary? assign them all. I want them automatically to the collection. Let's write this generically. Here's these Python magic guys. This is what you come here for. From collections, import default dict. We're gonna throw a default dict. Uh, zero. That for Oops. Okay, great. 
are eight zero zero F zero C, right? Eight zero zero. Okay, cool. Alright, let's also include a move instruction. I guess it's not really a decompiler. It was a poorly named thing. Limited time to learn exclusive emotes, guys. Get in here. Get me emotes. I don't know what emotes are, but do I like them? Do I like them? Will it make me more famous? Will it get me more women on Instagram? Okay, that's what we're really in this for, guys. You know, you think you waste your time learning bow hunting skills or nunchuck skills or computer hacking skills? If it wasn't for women on Instagram. Um, who had that in their bingo card? Uh, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Oh, that's okay. Wait, sorry. I'm getting my program. Nunchucks. Okay. Uh, okay. Now we can put in exactly one instruction. Oh, we want to put in the halt instruction. George, why don't you just use a for loop? Why are you doing that by hand? Why are you doing that by hand? You, you could just use a for loop, you know? Just have to use a for loop. Yeah, okay, this one. Um, start. No, it's possible that that's just a number of instructions as well, which has nothing to do with this. But, uh, uh, this one here. for eight one is 47 and is one and the scalar is uh 
Okay, we have a compiler now. Uh, let's run this program. sorts of junk to the program. Let's comment all that out. No more junk. There we go. And that's loading in the scalar register file. Um, loading in one. Okay. Let's now I set this to like 30, it's not gonna work, right? Yeah, it breaks the program. Uh, let's stick this at the end, add star at the end. Uh, we're gonna do this as plus prog, and we're gonna say All right, now if I add in a few more instructions here, we should be able to load into like scalar registers one, two, and three. Let's go. Bro, bro, look at that. Look at that. We loaded into registers one, two, and three, bros. 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 Okay. All right. Now we have a platform for experimentation. Mmm. It's not a compiler, it's an assembler, and it's definitely not a decompiler. I don't know why we named it that, but that's the beauty of hacking, man. You can name things whatever you want, because they're my things. Um, I'm actually gonna just make a mod to this thing. Why do read register uh, if ln equals a and let's do struct dot unpack q if ln equals a else i uh, rat yeah this is what you guys came here for right and rats all right so for some reason it's loading in four cds and not one through three sevens and that's because we have bugs. Let's fix the bugs. Uh, okay. So how far shifted am I for one, two, three, seven? Two. Uh, so M scale is actually, unc two is actually five. And that would make unc eight actually uh, 26. Let's go. Come on, one, two, three, sevens. Yeah, one, two, three, sevens. All right. Ooh, and I have some good ideas what unc2 might be. Because it's five, just like S1X. All right, look at that. Look at how we're loading those in, right? And like, look, I can set one of them different. I can set AABB here. Oh man, is there anywhere outside of Google where people are running their own custom code on the little shit coral? I don't think so. All right, let's try, are all the registers actually accessible? They are. Um, are there more registers? Let's keep going. Uh, nope, number's out of range actually, but uh, that doesn't actually mean anything because I just made that out, but. Uh, where's scalar register file? The beef. Oh. All right, well, there's a few more, but those aren't scale registers. There's other registers there, actually. Uh, they're called something else. Uh, 
We got those tired eyes all the time. Predicate register file. I mean, I'm, I doubt this is gonna work, but we can. We should just try it for completeness. Uh, if I set this to something like six, this is something like four, and then I raise this to something like 21, we get one more, 1356. No, we don't, okay, good. Okay. Um, coral notes, 32 scalar registers. Uh, oh, we should also check I mean, I can't even fit another 32, so I don't think there's 32 more. I think they're 32 bits. Uh, look at this, we're loading all those registers, guys. It's pretty nice, right? All right, great. We got our one function to work. Uh, which is actually kind of sad when you think about it. All we got was one function. All right, can we get a move to work? I gotta move. Okay, that, that was fun. Was it making progress fun? What's this? That one's interesting. Let's take a look at it. So I think this is doing something with register 12. Oh, register six, sorry. Is this like a move? And then unc1 is maybe, we have some things in the TPU to make some guesses at what these things are. It'd be op. So I mean, let's just make some guesses. S1 op and S1 y. Maybe this is something like a move. Uh, hang on, I, I want to change this a little bit. not print such an ugly, terrible thing. Can we grab something a little nicer? Uh, let's go for KB in dd.items. Okay, come over here. What's that?
Twenty one kill. Ten. That's good. Okay, now we have all the stuff in the program. Um, this prefix is hex 800. Uh, I'm just gonna make these hex so they're readable. Notice how they're almost the same. You only really see that when it's hex. Okay. Now we're decompiling everything. Oh, this is 2F. Use it 2F. Okay, and it also, yeah, these six immediate, 16 bit each, two could be merged for 32. Which makes me think that some of these are actually just... But yeah, look at how much structure we already have. All right, Just by doing that, we added a ton of structure. Um, so I think this prefix says which units are active. Does this thing have a prefix? Not really. So no, it could actually be something else. Um, but yeah. So this immediate size is B10. This lends me to believe that they're actually two different things. But yeah, so these are the these are the register moves here. There's some more register moves. My guess is the ones with like prefix 800 are the interesting ones. And then, uh, well actually here, yeah, we can say something. Uh, move I. Right. Let's just do it right that. By the way, thank you for suggesting construct. This is so much better than what I was writing. Right. Now we just have something that loads one, two, three, seven into register. Uh, By the way, what PCs were we getting to before? at this one. It's a terribly boring instruction. It just has a scalar. And I feel like that's what we were getting to before. What are we decompiling? Div2? All right, let's run Div2.
Reading current PC. Okay, it gets to 420. Look at this instruction. Look at the instruction before it. It's all zeros. Is that actually real? 410 is all zeros? Yeah. Which makes me think that's not always interpreted as a scalar. Uh, but actually, wait. We should also confirm that it is being interpreted completely as a scalar. Uh, and we should do this by writing a337 before the 1337. Uh, let's go. Right, a337, 1337? Okay, that works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's just move on to register 9. Just one more. Zeros are special. Right, register 9 there. A337, 1337. Okay. Okay. We got move I to work. Oh my God, I'd pay 50 bucks right now for a, uh, for a, for a list. Should I pay a hundred? And I'd also pay a hundred for White Lotus, man. Hey Google, it's not illegal to bribe employees, is it? Mm. Ah, yes. I have this old hundred dollar bill. If you send me just this list, of what all the uh, scalar opcodes are. If that's illegal, I uh, take it back. I'm not trying to do anything illegal. This is a Christian channel. Um, all right, so what if I just change this like 2E? What do I got? Nothing. Boring. Fuzz, 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 fuzz. Oh, interesting. It only gets to PC 20. Oh, no, wait, that's not false instruction. That actually makes sense. Look at what a weird instruction 420 is, though. It just has a scalar. 400 and 410 have just zeros. See, they're all so weird. That whole group. More diffing of compiler output. I don't think we have to do that yet. Here, look. We have a lot of interesting, these operations are interesting, right? Look at this one. Let's try that instruction. Okay. We have a scalar op 10, register 0, register 1 equals C, and the immediate scalar equals zero. I have some theory that this is a move. Move register. Oh, you know what? I think we can get this list for the, the TPUs somewhere. The, the big TPUs. Oh, please God, let it be the same. So these are logs. This is where I got all this information from. Move vector mask, scalar move.
Okay, well, that didn't seem to really do anything. Try twenty three and let's set a mead scaler. Do that. Come on, be it like end or something. Ah, I think that might be end. All right. There we go. And I. See what's end? And I'm gonna get rid of these ones because I don't think there's more than one. There's only one scaler here. Uh, oh, there's a patent? This is just for the big TPO. Wait, this is an IBM patent. You guys see how that's end, right? I'll find or. I mean, or we can probably just find by guessing. Uh, that's end. I'm gonna guess this is XOR. Why would you, what would you do with itself like that? It's a quick way to clear. Yeah, it's XR, right? No, it's not XR. Or? It's not or, and it's not XR. What is it? Is it not? It's not not. What is that? It's not XOR. See why I guessed XOR though, right? Because like what else? Look at this. It does something with itself. What else would you do with yourself? See if we can find OR. Another weird thing. Or. All right, it's or. I'm gonna double check now. I'm, now I'm guessing myself. Now I'm second guessing myself. You know. Okay, that's or.
21 is pretty common. Doesn't look like 21 uses the immediate. I don't know. Let's just keep let's just keep guessing here. It's 25. That XOR? That's XOR. There we go. Just so it's small. Mm, doesn't look like anything. Okay. We got and or XOR and move. Guys, we can almost write a program that does something. Uh, no, it can't do floats. Hmm. I wonder if like this, well, like I wonder if this immediate scalar can be interpreted as a register. Kind of makes me think that it can. You see what I'm saying? So this is like four plus one. Well, we're reverse engineering the scalar unit. Uh, it's like this is an and. I don't know what this is. That might be an add. Maybe it's add, but not uh, with an immediate. All right, so let's try something. See if that's the thing added to itself. Oh no, it is add with an immediate. Okay. Oh, what? Did I just not try add before? Nine, three, three, eight, one, two, yes, okay, fine. Add I. So boring. All right, ready to find sub? I'm gonna guess this one's sub. So let's try hex that, minus that, round it. No, it's a zero 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 zero. Yeah, okay, it's that fine. Okay, good. Add sub and or XOR. That's a pretty complete ALU. What do you think?
made a mistake in column 40 after the X. Yes, I did. Read that. So we know what all these are now. We don't know what 2C is yet. I see a lot of 2Cs and we don't know what it is. There's A there. There's 3 there. I don't know what that is. Uh, let me two see is doesn't seem to use the immediate. Maybe it's not. Does it do anything? It doesn't do anything. I feel like I tried that one already. What does this do? What does A do? Oh, you know what? I might not, I might have to put a zero there. No. All right, let's just load up another uh, register with something. Dead. Let's see if we can start to find the registers. What is A? Did nothing. Look at all those ads. Remember when this was just, remember when this was all just opaque, incoherent stuff? What is this? Why don't we do this though? Or just adds B to four. It's just a move. And that's just effectively a register move, right? Puts what's in B into four. coffee. Like coffee. This stuff's interesting. Why are these here? I don't think that that means what I think it means. I think that there's a limit to the size of that immediate, and I only think it's that because of the first one. An ALU would also have ink, deck, and not. I agree that it has not. I don't think it necessarily has those other ones. Um. We can try and like see what we get. See if we get anything out of 26. Okay, this did something. Uh, is this not?
Oh, interesting. Oh, that might be Mall or something. No. Oh, that's Shift. That's Shift. Yes, it is. Gift sub, you get question. You don't gift sub, you don't get question. All right, maybe this one, Schlar. Seems right. So nice. Okay, um, I don't know. It's 20. Didn't do anything. Okay. What's that? That one mall? Does it have mall? Maybe it doesn't have mall. Uh, I don't know. Let's put in a tinier number. Let's put in like um, hex e. That's a good number. What's what's hex eighty b with this? Nothing. Uh, Actually, let's also see if that changes anything. If it's actually reading from a register. No, it's not reading from a register. I don't think any of them actually read from registers. Alright. Two. Uh, oh, this is arithmetic shift. Right. Right? Uh, let's just do 10 to make sure. This is going to give me Fs and As. Um, you want to have your arithmetic shifts, yes. Arithmetic. Nothing. I'm purposely obfuscated, they're just not documented. Nothing's like super weird I found yet. Mm, nothing. Sure, too easy to do nothing. Just to make sure I wasn't messing up, let's go around to 2C and we expect a B to appear there. Yeah, B. Alright. Sure, they don't actually do nothing. Good morning, we're making good progress on the ALU.
One of the register files turned to one when I did 2C. Where? Oh, the predicate register file. Good find, good find. Oh, I like that. Okay, uh, yeah, so the R compares. Oh, good find. They set the, comp the yeah, 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 watch, 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 watch. And I bet if I set this one to one, it's gonna set the next predicate register file. Yeah, it sets this predicate register file, okay. Um. Pred, oh, nice, oh, I, I missed that, okay. Um, something probably comparing it to the immediate scalar. Those are gonna be a lot more annoying to find because we're gonna have to do multiple, but. Uh. I mean, what if I set it to like? See if the M scale is actually no, it's still that right. Maybe it's like not equal. Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, so it's zero if equal. Um, uh, this is any Q I. Oh, nice find, nice find. Oh yeah, see this is why hats three, nice find. This is why we stream. Catching my mistakes, boys. All right, let's try uh, EQI. I don't like that it's only, maybe that's EQ. Let's try. Not EQ. There's probably some pattern to this. If or is not equal. Let's try D. That's one now. You gotta be real careful with this stuff because it could actually be like less than or greater than or something. At zero. Oops, see, that works too, so it's not equal. It's actually less than. Uh, S I. Uh, greater than or equal. Let's go back to not equal and make sure I did that exactly right. Nope, see, that's zero now, oh, not equal, that's zero now. So this is actually not not equal, it's less than. Uh... Okay, so now that's zero. Now, if it's the same, it's also gonna be zero. If it's more, it's gonna be one. Okay. Uh, my guess is this is gonna be equal or something. Uh, you know what? I have an idea. Let's write out a few more of these. Um, so onc equals to be. Set that to zero. Okay. All right. Now, when I if I set unc to less than, this one is going to be false, 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 true. So we're only going to get a one in the fourth predicate register file. Oh, we got one there too. Zero m scalar. That shouldn't be. Oh, no, 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 that's right, because it's less than, uh, notice this is signed, right? Because zero is, is uh, unsigned. Oh, but everything's probably backward, hang on. 
I'm not dealing with that. Okay, now the only one we get is this. So because M scalar is greater than wait. That's a less than. M scalar S Y is less than that one. Okay, that's right. Um, now let's set it to GEQI. Alright, GEQ gets us these first three. Let's try this one. Okay, this one gets us these two and this one. So this is not equal. See this one, maybe this one's equal. No. This one is probably, um, this is signed less than, my guess is this is unsigned less than. We can check this, uh, let's add one more. Whoops. So considering this is signed less than, we're gonna get a four in the. Wait, no, that should be, maybe that one's unsigned, this one's signed. It looks signed to me. This is signed, this is unsigned. Sign stuff is confusing. See that one just has the first two ones. No, this one just has this one. This is greater than or equal. This is signed, and I bet you the next one's just not signed. Okay, SY is this, SY is greater than or equal to that, greater than or equal to that. Not, it's greater than or equal to that, only signed. Um, this is unsigned, greater than or equal to. And this one's only going to give me two ones in the top. No, I don't know. Well, this is greater than or equal, and this is greater than. This is stupid. Greater than because it didn't give me this one. Yeah, so that's greater than. That's whatever. Is going to be equal, it's only going to give me this one. Okay, good, fine. And then this one is going to be greater than or equal unsigned or something. Greater than or equal unsigned. I, I don't care. These are somewhat right. Okay. Mm. There's some like, you have some like set of these that you do and I don't really know them. Okay, those are pretty good. That's pretty good. I feel like I've seen this before. I feel like these are the same ones that are on the big TPU. 
Um, or you know what? Are they risk five? I feel like I've seen these before. Add, subtract, and or XOR, show, write, it's like almost, <laughs> it's not actually right. Um, no, it's definitely not arm. It's, where's a, I have an implementation somewhere. It might even be in TinyGrad. Like there's everything in TinyGrad. Uh, where's my risk five? I wrote a risk five somewhere. It's Twitch core. These are right less than less than greater than less than unsigned greater than or equal sign I'm sure that's right actually I just I just got my thing flip it around uh, no but then like these don't match at all Google TPU ISA. Okay, regardless, we, we know what those other instructions do now. They're compares. So this is a compare. Uh, now, here's a question. What does it do with the result of that compare? Anything? That's like a less than or something. So it's checking to see if uh, this is less than zero. Yeah. A. I wonder what that does. I bet you that's another. Okay, I have a theory. Let's try something like sub. Let's try add. See if add is one. And for this, we're going to try something like. Uh, let's see. Yeah, to itself. Yeah, that's it to itself. All right, cool. So I think that that first bit there is actually just whether it's a scalar or not. Uh, see, like, let's see, something x ordered with itself is going to be zero. So if I go to five, I'm going to get a zero. But here, let's x over with uh. That's right. All right, because that X over that is that. Okay. Um, drop the 
and use reg in scalar instead. Say add equals zero one, and here we can say sx plus y plus uh, s sub m scalar. So there's like three register operations. Does that make sense? So I think we can reverse most of this now. Um, for example, eight here. I don't know, that's not a, it's only these still. Nine hundred, I think. If you just include that 800 there, that just means uh, use the uh, scalar unit. That's just like enables the scalar unit is my guess. But then you have something like this, which doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, so A is not equal. So this is comparing, this is asking is five not equal to five? I mean, I don't know why you do that, but. We're missing something, right? Oh, I wonder if this here means only run based on the predicate. You know what I'm saying? Like only run if it's compare. What does that do? It adds six, but that also looks like it does nothing, right? So what does that do? It adds six to zero. It might just be a random ASIC guy to say, yeah. What does that do? It adds one to four, sometimes. And then go work at Twatter, man. Twatter. Twatter. You got a blue chalk. Go check out my blue chalk on Twatter. <laughs> Using predicate would be a branch instruction. Not necessarily. Look at how like arm does it, right? What is this? Does this move in eight and one to nine? Well, you know, we also have something else. We can also do div two eight, which is a different program. Some things change. Monk is not defined. I'm sure that's sub. That's sub. Okay, there's got to be flag somewhere to tell it how to interpret that thing because this is being interpreted as something else. Like this is somehow telling it to receive uh, eight bytes. Blue chalk and water. Mm. 
All right. So probably the next steps are to like make the minimum program that communicates. And to start to play with the communication stuff. So this immediate size thing just might not be right. It might even be off by a factor of hex 10. What do I multiply PC by again? Yeah, hex 10. Possible. That belongs over there. No, that doesn't seem. That doesn't seem obviously better. Sorting by prefix and looking at onc3 might reveal a pattern. Gonna get more coffee. Uh, is this a shoe rack? No, uh, no shoes. I mean, these are interesting too. Like, what does this mean? Why are there things here? Okay, there's something else we can do too, which we can compile programs that take in weights and then it's like separated into two chunks. Sends fine as well, which is interesting. Even without me doing anything. Okay, we're back to the div2 program. Oh, here, I mean, here's something interesting. We can compare uh, div2 with ReLU. Yeah, the only difference is in this instruction here, 6b0. So this, whatever this is, Uh, it's determining what we do. Which is just fun. And then we have more loads here doing the stream back.
This is some kind of wait instruction. Um. That'll let me inject instructions from the other program if I want. I'm going to inject some instructions. Okay, this is halt. Let's try going from like hex 71. Let's say prog equals. Uh, MDAT sub hex 71. Let's go down to where's the halt here at AD? Say AD. Hmm. Wait, that just worked? So when I read out these registers, doesn't this kill it? How does this work? How is this working right now? I'm really confused. It's just like hard to break these things. Or am I sending the wrong program somehow? Weird. I don't know, maybe a lot of these instructions just don't do anything. What? Like how? Oh, but okay, this won't work if I unplug it and replug it because I only did the bottom half, which is going to resend the same stuff. Yeah, okay, look, this is just sending me garbage memory now. But it is sending me something, which is very interesting. We just like started here and just cut. That's cool. Wait, so what I got, I think now is there's going to be a. Uh, I'm going to have arbitrary memory dump in a minute. seconds and I'm ready to go.
All right, let's see if that keeps sending stuff. It does. I don't know, binary search by hand. That's all hacking is. Still works. 90. Does it still work? It still works. 80? Still works? Okay. 78. Still works. 72. That can't still work. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, it just reads it. It's just because we had old state left around. 80. Go 80 to 90. Does that work? 71 to 90. Seventy-one to a zero. This one works. Not anymore, it doesn't. 71 to AD. Okay, dump something. But see, now the problem is if I go back and I change it, even if I comment that out entirely, it still works. No, not that well. That one still work. That one still works, and then it like doesn't halt. It keeps blinking the light. Oh, because we should include a halt as well. PC is 3D. Why is the lights the one? I told it to halt. Okay, where is the USB set? It's not USB send, it just like sets up memory. Loads in some pointer. It also, like, look, that totally changed it. It could be getting like stuck in a loop somewhere, you know? What if these things are like loops? Now we're getting stuck somewhere. See, that's like crashing. That output stuff, that works. Um, let's go one at a time. AC still work? No. 
So AC was important. Whatever was at AC was important, this one here. Prefix C, what is that now? Prefix 800 M size. M size 1800. Okay, I don't think M size always means that. I, M size has to mean something else. That works fine. Did we need the instruction before it? Yes, we did. Very important instruction. four into register nine. The status response is the one that matters, I think. Something's triggering that. What happens if I go to 77? That works fine. Okay, so that one wasn't important. This one wasn't important. Can I go down to 7A? I'm just gonna, just to be thorough, let's unplug and replug and make sure 7A is the max. Seven 7A still works, okay. Um, let's find out where that breaks. Can I go to 7C? No. How about 7B? But I feel like there's some other problem there. Okay, 7B is fine. If I remove 7B, it like maybe gets stuck in a loop somewhere. Actually, let's do that and let's see what did PC say? That hex 210. Here. F9, O, E, F, F. It's stuck there. I see. Which one is that? If the one before, onc zero is three. What is that? What? Zero is never three. Well, three is never three. CO four B, CO five B. Okay, those are straightforward. Yeah, and that's at nine E there. So it was stuck. It was stuck before that. Okay, maybe can I do nine E? Ah, getting status response. Okay, the status response still works. I can't get the output tensor, but I don't really care about that. Okay, so that's the status response sender right there. Let's try 9F, Let's see if I still get a status response. 9F, I still get a status response. Just for sanity. Okay, no, so I don't get a status response. So 9F, fine. A zero, George, you should be binary searching. Uh, let's try A four. See, see how it says getting status response and it gives me something? Okay, still getting the status response at A four, how about A six? And then we're gonna have a, we're just gonna find the instructions to send the status response. Okay, still getting one, A eight. Good. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. This boy. AA still good. AB. Now we're really getting low on the number of instructions. No. So we need AA through AD. 
let's just type out those instructions. Okay, got it. A A through A D. So we need these. Uh, which is actually just three instructions. very necessary. Uh, maybe this isn't though? I'll we'll get rid of that. Oh, oh, oh. Notice that four. Wait, I have a theory. What if I put in one, three, three, seven here? What status response do I get? Seven. <laughs> Reading current PC seven what? Okay, well, seven, oh, I don't know, let's put in three here. Is that gonna give me a three there? That doesn't give me a status response at all, okay. Oh, you know what? Where is that code I have for getting status response? Why don't I only read 10? Read 400. How long is the status response? Well, that's actually how long it is. Okay. But what if I put in 8? What does 8 do? Will it send me an 8? No, 8 doesn't work. But if I put in a 7 here, I get a 7. You can only have certain statuses. Are 5s okay? Fives are okay. Can scalar can be changed. Do I need this middle instruction or is it just a useless middle instruction? Sometimes instructions in the middle are useless. Nope, probably did something. Oh, I have some theories. Okay. Maybe these are registers, right? I mean, these things definitely don't... This looks like two different things. This doesn't look like one immediate. I've said that a bunch of times about M size. Like, it doesn't look like one thing. Uh... None of this works to get the output tensor though. So I bet you, oh, here we go, look. Look at this other stuff here. This, this is the same, look at this is the same pattern as this. So that probably loads in the status response. And this probably loads in the uh, the real response, the other response. Let's do prog plus equals m dot sub eight a to eight f, and then we'll see if we'll read both responses. In fact, doesn't even read the status response anymore, so. Where did it get stuck? PCC0. Just that, but. Uh, I'll do 
through that. So I wonder if, uh, what if I like change it here to set? Yeah, so that works. So I, I think that this scalar thing is actually independent of this. So for example, I can just do this and get the same output. Yeah. Does it matter where it is or can I put it here? Interesting. So that's reading nine then. This one is reading nine. Mm, and no, wait, there's a nine there. Oh, do you see the nine? Oh, that's cool. Yo, who sees the nine, boys? Watch your shit. Watch your shit. Now it's going to give me a zero. If I get change that to zero and change that to eight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, eating chicken, bros. Eating chicken. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Uh, okay. Okay. So that is a scalar register, that means. Um, I think, wait, how many do we scalar registers do we have? 32. So let's steal some bits from the top of n size. Uh, are they the top? Yeah, yeah, they're the top. Okay, let's steal five bits from the top of m size. Um, uh, we'll call it s reg bits integer five okay now we're going to say something here like s reg equals eight right and that should actually still work uh numbers out of range oh it's because we have hmm i say oh well because i gotta get rid of that put S right in the wrong place. S right goes here. Yes. Okay, good. So we're getting six. Ah, look at this. Okay. So this is the move for the scalar reg. This here, this probably stores nine in this uh, in this uh, register. You see? And look, it's it's interleaved. It's interleaved. So this is this is just loading up these registers with these values, right? So it loads nine in and nine is four, right? Does that make sense? Uh, so now like here, this actually doesn't matter. I could probably set this to something like 15. 
um, confirm it's changing. We'll set that to five. Yeah, see there's a five there. Called something else. Let me let me see what I called it uh, here. Yeah. Oh, maybe VS three scale of registers. Stop it. Copied into the. Let's call this VS reg. It's copied into the vector unit. That VS reg. Uh, now what's interesting is there's probably nothing in there. So I'm not exactly sure why we need that one. Oh, I guess zero is in there, which is fine. It just wasn't zero before. You see how they're interleaved? And like, you don't have to, oh, sorry, not interleaved, but like you can fuse them and make one instruction out of them. And that's what they're doing here. So this is like loading four into nine this is loading zero into eight, and then it stores zero at 9,400. Five. Right, let's see what they do here. They're putting three, eight, Put an eight in that one. Yeah, so these are the registers for uh, these are the USB uh, like MIMO registers, but it's probably not even that. Because like, someone has to know how to do that move. Maybe it does if I just. The other thing is that these interpretations don't can be different. Like a lot of times in an instruction set, things are like packed pretty tightly. So these things can mean different things uh, depending on the, uh, the meaning. If I like didn't put, if I put not zero into eight, what do I put like hex 10 into eight? What do I get? Oh, look at that. Hex 10 showed up there. Can I put big numbers into here? there it won't matter yeah so that what what goes into a there if I, if I set prog equal to that it the only thing it spits back to me is the actual tensor right yeah I, I don't know do I have special code in getting output tensor no I don't it's just that it's boring Okay. Um. Yeah, 
Okay, let's keep going with this. So what if I go back here to 5,400? Right, I change that to seven. And I put something in seven. All right, it shows up there. It's so boring. Can I go all the way back to the one that it stores in six? What does it store in six? 41. Okay. Let's give it something more exciting. Hold on to threes. Am I going to put that in the first byte? All right, puts that in the first byte. There we go. Done. Uh, can I change this five to other things? Or is it just gonna be five? Yeah, that one's special. The last one's special, the other ones aren't, which is weird. Um, one, five, nine, five adds a four there, nine, two there, okay. So again, M size is not what it looks like. Um, it seems like there's another thing to steal from it because it seems like there's like offset you know what i mean what do i have to shift it i have to shift it uh how many bits do i want to leave in size with 1400 is fine but one more than that isn't so you want to leave it with 14 27 minus 14 call this one M offset uh, yes right okay so all of these are actually 1500 and then it's just M offset that increases. It's like an address. It's nice because like at least you kind of get the slip points here, right? I guess when you break this down further, it's not even gonna be, all right, but this here is the USB right, and it's very uh, unsexy. It's very just boring, let me see what it does. See, look, we had something with almost no structure, and we've discovered structure. Here's a question. Do we need that prefix? Yes, we do. Look, so we're sending that out on the USB, which is the stuff that we put in there. Uh, what if I don't do that? Does it matter? This does. It seems like we have to push four 
bytes, and it kind of matters what this one is, but the other ones can be anything. This one has limitations, but the other ones don't care. This pattern also exists here in the code. Would they add one to seven? But only sometimes. I assume that that's what that means. These move four and five into 800. Sorry, not at 800, into 6 and 7. Like, we can try to learn what these registers are doing. Oh, okay, so we know it stops at 420. We know this is where it stops. So whatever that is. And there's another one of these USB looking blocks up here. So maybe it actually sends the status three times. We just only get it once. Or have we tried getting it more times? I'm not actually sure we have. Let's just go to the real program. once. So I'm not really sure why it's in the code three times. Well, maybe after you get the output tensor? No. You can only do it once. I think sometime that means an address, but sometimes it means something else. It, it feels like this is a, uh, oh, here's a question. We don't actually know if M size, M size could steal bits from prefix maybe. The only reason I made it the size I did was because of this. But that could be a lot of things. Uh, it's not really an argument to be made to shift it over 10. But I have an idea that these are registers in the chip and this is like uh, you poke 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 and then you poke this one uh, by the way I can set zero to non-zero what happens if I do that does that break it no it doesn't there's a chance zero means something special there vector slots. Mm -hmm. 
All I'm saying is prefix could actually be 12, and then we have another thing, like P2. Uh, let's look at the instruction that we know changes. That's six here. We have a weird im offset, a vs reg, and a scalar op. Vs reg of f, which I'm not sure I believe. I think this might just totally mean something different here. And this one's not even an 800 operation. then I don't even know where to start on unc3. those predicate registers are there? It's seven from one, and then no, uh, it's normal. S op is A, which we know is A, not equal. I'm not sure why you'd check if something's not equal to itself. What does that do? No, I mean, those are just, they're just like, it's just like a channel probably to communicate with the firmware. Checks for NAN, funny. What changes in there? Mm. All right, does this thing support unions? I think we might have to start unions. So I don't think this is right. Possible it's right. What is this though? Okay. Let's try to re-enable getting the output tensor. Let's see if we can do that. And let's see if we can do it by adding stuff to the end of the program. Okay. Even weirder, we're actually getting the correct output tensor. But I think that's only just because I haven't reset it. Let's reset it. We're still getting the status response that matches my stuff. Okay, now we're getting junk. Let's figure out which instructions actually make that happen. Okay. So we're back to 7b. Uh, what if I go to 7d? Does it still happen? No, it doesn't. Okay, so those instructions are important. But it's interesting that we still get our status response. 
Uh, well, actually, it's not that interesting. Okay. Well, we know that we don't need the stuff after, let's say, A7. Yeah, okay, so notice how we're still getting an output tensor. We're going to figure out which things actually send the output tensor. And I think that's more interesting because it's sending memory, not registers. All right, that stuff's not in any of my registers. Um, I mean, it's not like there's going to be secrets when we dump the memory, but... Five. Ninety five works, okay. Ninety four is ninety four is broken. Okay, so whatever is at whatever is at ninety four we actually need. This one. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks mad fancy, bros. What the hell? What if we only need that one? No luck. Um, what happens if we add in 7C? Does it get stuck somewhere? Yeah, it gets stuck at 260. Well, that's the end. Just needed whatever was in. That's a big chunk to need. 7B to 95. So it needs all of these instructions. Let's chop out, let's try going just to A8 plus uh, start there again. Who thinks it's going to work? Nice hacking is just binary searching by hand. The sooner you realize you love binary searching by hand, the sooner you'll be a good hacker. Right, that obviously works. I suspect this stuff doesn't matter. still works. We didn't need any of that. Uh, A2, do we need this? Can I go back to 81? That's fine. Got 80. No, I needed that. We need 7B, 7C, we need these. That's actually zero.
possible that you just need to have a not following that one? And if you don't, never mind. Like it's possible some of these instructions are just needed when they're in a group, you know? Okay, uh, like this one. Let's try this moving this group entirely. So let's go right to 90 there and see if that works. Come on. No. Because we know that that's the... Uh... This is the preamble for sending a status packet. I mean, it might just need all this. Okay, it needs B0 through 81, so it needs these. Lots of stuff I don't understand. And then it needs these all the way down to 95. There's a lot of crazy M scalers over there. and paste this down to here. Can we get rid of that? Uh, where's that one? AF. What? How does that not work? It should be the same. Oh, I have to put certain things in there. Seven has to be eight and eight has to be three. Okay, not just that. AF, uh... oh, sorry. That's eight and nine, not seven and eight. Which makes sense. What? Come on. Okay, that's fine. But actually, notice how it gives me a different answer for one of them. Notice how that's all zeros. But again, I don't know if that matters. I don't understand how that doesn't match though. 8a is moving in 6, which is what I'm doing. I move in 8 and 3. I moved in 8 and 3. Now I'm setting that, and now I'm doing that. Okay, is it this one that's bad? One at a time, one at a time. That one's fine. Is it this one that's bad? It's that one that's bad, okay. Uh, that's why I move seven in. Gotta have patience. But it also moves. That's odd. You're telling me this would work if I also stuck this crap here? That should match exactly. That works. But if I get rid of this extra scalar stuff, it doesn't. That's weird, man. 
that violates the model I had. Oh. What? Okay. Doesn't like, doesn't like that I did them in advance, but that all works now. Uh, go over to 8F there. No. Oh, I put that one back in. Okay, now it sends the output tensor. Uh, what if I put that up there? Works fine. What if I put that one above that one? Works fine. What if I move that one down there? Doesn't work. That's just, I don't get it. That just violates the model I had of this thing. Why does it matter if I put this one underneath this one? Unless that's somehow corrupting register eight. Where did what three go? Is there three there? Where does this three go? I don't know. What happens if I put a zero here? Doesn't work. What happens if I put a nine here? Is it gonna send nine bytes? Nope, it still sends eight bytes. What if I put uh, 10 there? Is it gonna send 10 bytes or is it only gonna send eight? No, it's just not gonna work. Why so many chat restrictions? Increase your font size. So many chat restrictions. So, so like people like you don't like say things like that, right? Like that's the point. You want a bigger font size? You can start your own stream and you can make the font. Let me tell you, bro, on your stream, you could make the font this Fucking big, man. That's gonna be Mobius five stream. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna stream like this, and I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna teach you Unix L S. Yo, L S. People out here watching their phones, man. And I gotta wait for it to get tiny again. See, it's not tiny enough. Oh, that's a good size. I can make it a little bigger. We have to, we just have to fit the whole disassemble on the screen. Okay. Um, where were we? I'm trying to figure out which of these things actually do anything. Now we have another one that has a prefix of 9C0 
and an M size of 20. What if I like change this to 30? Does that break? No, that's fine. What if I comment this out entirely? Nope, you needed that. It was very important. Tiny grid's good for whatever you make it good for. The limit is only you. The limit is only you. Wow. I like that. It's like a slogan for a product. The limit is only you. You see, because it's got this like double entendre vibe to it, right? Like, like the limit is only you can be said like so positively, like, you know, maybe like the only limit is your imagination. But um, then, you know, like, like this, uh, the, that's like maybe the nice way. So, you know, what I mean. you know what I mean? The syntax highlighting's for me. Why do I need so many instructions to do this? Okay. Now we have another one. All right, we're gonna write these out. Let's try to figure it out. M offset equals 600. M scalar equals prefix equals 1400 M offset equals 400 VS reg equals two. I don't know how I feel about that. Do I actually need all that crap? Do I actually need that instruction at all? Okay, how about, can that instruction go? Nope, we needed that instruction. It was very important, guys. Of course, of course we needed that instruction. You, you thought you thought you could, you thought you could, you could, uh, you could not, so you could get away with not using that instruction? No, you have to use that instruction. Look at this garbage. Then we're getting into unc3 land. Like that one is an unc3. Yo, I think we might have to learn what a TTU is. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finally make it work. VS reg equals two. SX equals hex 18. SY equals three. In the scalar equals 108. This is definitely parsed differently. It definitely doesn't mean that. It works though. Right, let's see if I like get rid of that crap. Was it needed? Yes, it was needed. All very needed. What if I said VS reg equals zero? That's fine. What if I said SX equals zero? That's fine, but we get something else. I 
think that's like the memory location, maybe? Maybe you said SY equal to zero. That's fine, but we also got something else. This one only has M scalar. You're like, how does this do anything? This one has an M scalar and an unc3. definitely using the TTU. He's got to be using the TTU. So the TTU is like the lupus of this thing, you know? Okay, prefix equals AD, which doesn't look like any prefixes I've seen before. M size equals 2. M offset equals 8. M scalar equals 2 bajillion thousand. And then we don't need this anymore? Let's unplug it and confirm that it actually works when I reset it. Okay, there's only a few instructions here to copy. Let's see, do we really need this instruction? Let's get rid of this instruction. Because this shit's super addictive, guys. Don't you just want it to work? Don't you want to like understand? You have these like mini breakthroughs? You're like, oh my god, it all makes sense now. It all just falls into place so nicely. I'm definitely, it's it's crashing because the TTU, man. I'm upsetting the TTU. I, I know it already. It's like loads in the status. Prefix 1400, M offset equals 400. Is this 1400 the same as this 1400? Probably not. They're probably different 1400s. Does this look like anything we've seen before? By the way, these are different onc threes. I know they look similar but they're not. This one only has an only three. By the way, I'm in the I'm as much in the dark about this as you guys. I don't understand what this stuff does. Okay. So in order to send the output tensor, we have this followed by this. I don't know. 
Can we take out this instruction? Oh, that was a very important instruction, guys. We can't take that one out. How about this one? Can we take out this one? How about that one? Was that not an important instruction? It can't really take all these instructions to send something out the USB port, can it? Am I like configuring the DMA controller or something? No. And then how come I can't put this here? Oh, I can put it there, but I can't put it here. Which doesn't make any sense. Can I put more of these in? Does that just do nothing? Yeah, you can put more of these in. What if I put more of those in and then do that? Does that work? Wait, what? Oh, okay. There's just some conflict. That's fine. Nups. So some of this, what if I just start replacing these instructions with nops? Does that work? I shouldn't replace the instruction entirely, I should add a nop. If I replace this instruction with a nop. Okay, that instruction was useless. We found a useless instruction. How about this one? Is this one useless? No, that one was very useful. Don't do that. Wait, it doesn't work anymore. Maybe that one was important. Wait, what? No, nothing works anymore. Look, that all has zeros now. Need delay slots. Unplug, replug. Must be configuring some DMA. This is
Let's see if we can figure out how to send more than eight. Where's the eight? Is it this eight? Well, it's probably not that eight. I did change that to nine and got nothing. Yeah, nothing changes. Um, I'm not sure any of these are jump commands. It's possible. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying that this knob is there because I have some jump command. Because there's some jump command hidden in this stuff. I mean, that, that seems possible. I don't know if that's what you're actually saying, but that's kind of what I took away from it. Like for some reason that code is just not executing doesn't actually have to do with, we can set a breakpoint there and see. All right, so you're saying that the reason this doesn't work is because this is here. Let's switch that up. That's a good theory. Well, now the nine's not there either. Let's put that there. Okay, that works. Um, See where that knob is, and let's set a bread, set a uh, set 130. Let's set a breakpoint there. Now we execute the knob. Good theory, though. change anything. Doesn't change anything. change a lot of the code in this stuff and it doesn't seem to matter as long as there's still something there it'll work hmm that really doesn't matter as long as I said im size to 700 Oh, this just loads something in register 600. It doesn't really matter what. Hmm. 
weird. What if I change this to 400? That has to be 600. <laughs> What if I change it to VSREG? Oh, I guess VSREG now is zero. Do I need these prefixes here? I do, but not for that one. I don't know what this one does. Any data blobs doesn't seem right. Uh, let's comment out that hex 20. Does that matter? That hex 20 was important. Uh, this okay. I'm starting to wonder if these m offsets and m sizes are the same thing. And this is something like store, that's something like load, and this is something like store. That's interchangeable. That's actually total junk. Can I get rid of the M scaler? Nope, that's what matters. That's crazy, man. You're telling me I can replace it with that, and it's fine. We don't understand what any of this is. Can I get rid of the onc3? But if I comment that out entirely, it doesn't work. If I do that, interesting. Okay, so a lot of this stuff seems to just have more to do with timing than anything else. Do I need this one? That one's important. Oh wait, is it writing to, what happens if I set that to nine? Is it gonna set nine bytes? No, 10 bytes. But yeah, so this stuff doesn't matter as long as, can I do that? No, that one needs it. On three, doesn't matter. Let's unplug, replug. Fine. Uh, this one needed. What 
parts of this wire unit. Can I do that? I keep around the end scaler. That, but we get a different output. Look at how that number is different. Address? No. Yes, reg two is the right address. No. S Y. Look at how it's a different output. Do we have anything in that register? No. All right, but this changes something. Hang on. How much does it change it? Okay. B5E? No, it's totally different. I mean, like, DMA, to be fair, is like a really hard thing to figure out that we probably won't figure out till the end. So maybe we should just leave this alone for now and be like, oh, we got to do something. Similar to this one. DMA through the USB protocol. Questions getting dumb. Dum 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 dum. Well, it's not DMA through the USB protocol. It's just don't, uh, it's just, uh, I want to do more than eight. If I put 10 there and 10 there. Can do 10 now? No. I mean, that might be the only way to tell some of this stuff is if we, uh, This one's interesting. I actually just don't think it means that. I don't think it means, I, I think this means something totally different here. Let's look at where SY actually is. Uh, it's there. I think that's gonna just be a whole different, um, like this is, a, is just a constant in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this thing. Let's try something like sx equals one. Change 
Okay, uh, it starts to change it. I'm thinking this like shifts the memory by like one, you know? Let's try something. Let's go way back and let's make this thing output big stuff. Uh, instead of eight, let's say hex 10. Is that gonna give me longer code? Oh, we don't need to add here. I'm always good. Be the same length. B30, right, sweet. Uh, CP temp prog uh, div2 10 coral. Compare div2 coral to div2 10 coral. I probably should have taken it from here. Like, look at how much changes. Wow. I'm only a little changes down here, actually. Here, where was I taking from? A, B, zero? Look at eight, like switches places, and this changes to a four. Interesting. the same. Which one changed to a four? Eight B zero. Here. Wait. Oh, so M scalar there is ten. So that is ten. This is the output line. I do that, that crashes. But it's also because something else had to change. It's ever an 8F. Eight F, nine C zero. That had to change to twenty. What? Did you change to eighty? Oh look at that. No, wait, that didn't do anything. Never mind. No, they didn't just change. No, that's not all that changed. No way. Something else changed. That does make sense. Yeah, im offset is now 80. Yeah, okay, that doesn't really make sense. There you go, now it outputs 10. Okay, that doesn't make sense. What if I change this to 20? Does this work? No, probably have to change this.
that has to become 18. Where is that 18? All right, yeah, we're just not parsing this correctly. It is 180 now. Does that not make sense to anybody else? There's no other changes. Now, why doesn't that work? Offsets 180. What? Shops that can be 180. Shops that's 80. Fine. Okay, mm it's changing something back in the 7B. I'll change something up here. Got to change that. Now I'll change the 7C as well. I don't know, I'm not really doing this methodically anymore. Uh, these parsings are totally incorrect. It's just alias with something else. Dump 20. Okay, it'll dump 10. I set that to nine. Does it ever give me nine? It never gives you nine. What hex 18? Hex 18 works. Yeah, so this is like enable DMA or something. And then, yeah. Okay, until we understand a whole lot more, this isn't gonna make any sense. Start looking. What are the other like units? Are there any other registers? Predicate register file, scalar register file.
Thanks. See you, Smurf Key. It doesn't look like there's going to be anything as easy as that. It's nice how simple this status response is. Uh, I don't know about this output tensor. I'm just going to comment it out in the runner. I think it's a waste of time. I think it's a waste of time to try to understand. I don't think that's the best way to like attack the next thing, right? Everything here we understand so far. Uh, I don't care about. All right, that's like that minus that. We got good at our scalars. Maybe the next thing to tackle is the. Uh, also, what happens if I turn the prefix off here? I assume this function, I assume it just doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Wait. No, it's weirder than that. If I turn the prefix off, I only get this. Which C So that only gives us C. For some reason, it isn't doing that fetch. This might just be undefined. Um, Oh, that might mean scalar is like a register or value and not like a, I mean, this might get pretty close to the microcode of the CPU, right? Uh, here's a question. Let's try something. Let's go down to like here in the registers, right? So we're gonna get, we're gonna see two Abby Abbies. All right. If I get rid of that, I still see two Abby Abbies. Okay, never mind. But I won't see an Abby Absey. But if I put that back, I see an Abby Absey. So it's just.
Basil Alexander, why do you want to know that? Why do you want to know what I'm trying to achieve? We're trying to crush the Zerg, man. We're playing Protoss and we're trying to crush the Zerg. Right. Why do you want to live? I like that. I like that. Yeah. What do you mean by an inference chip, bro? But why do you think this chip is an inference chip? Who told you that? How do you know it's not a training chip? Every inference chip is a training chip. Zerg has no chance. That's right, bro. I'm four base my Protoss. Got four gates, man. Four gates in 530. Let's go. JTAG might have the right idea. Maybe we just start compiling some things and try to reverse the vector ops. You must construct additional pylons. Uh, that's right, that's right. These are all different types. Well, if you don't know shit about programming, I recommend boot camp, where you won't learn shit, but you'll feel like you're learning something. Now, if you actually want to learn, there's only one way to learn programming, this is real advice. You gotta just sit down and do something, right? See this? Go buy one of these and, you know, try to make it do something. Wow, damn, Google, Google, why isn't Google paying me? I'm shilling for their shit. I've probably done more with this coral than like anyone, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's sad. Like this chip's actually crazy powerful. Um, but they don't release any of this. They're cheap, they're, they're, they're 20 bucks. Uh, No, nobody used it. Of course nobody used it. Nobody bought this guard. Oh yeah, let me compile TensorFlow Lite so I can run things at basically the same speed as I can on my CPU, right? Uh, no, that's right, that's right. They, 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 you know, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have to, you know, um, I don't know, I wonder what their content guidelines would look like. Yeah, like everyone got one of these. The point is, the, the, I mean, the USB one is totally useless. The, the USB one is, uh, especially if you plug it into your PC, like why would you not just use your PC? It's, it's not faster um, than like a, well, actually I shouldn't say that. If it really is four teraflops, I mean, that's probably not better than like, that's probably on par with CPUs uh, if you use all the cores.
Well, no, I mean, think about it. We can reverse engineer this whole instruction set and then you can compile arbitrary code. Who wants to run Linux on this thing? I don't know if it can run Linux, but. Um. All right. We need some breakthroughs. Okay. All right, it's time. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it, but we're gonna to have to start moving to things. We're gonna to have to start moving to things like matrix multiplies, where there's actually some you know meat on the bones. Of the thing, uh, and then when you do a matrix multiply, it actually it outputs two. Uh, it outputs two two things. You'll say. Does it even have RAM? Uh, yeah, it's got eight megs of RAM. Uh, I don't know too much more than that. I just know it has eight megs of RAM. Okay, this is a eight by eight matrix multiply now. The problem is it's gonna output two separate Invalid model. Why? Why is this an invalid model? See, look, now we have two programs, but at least one of them is really short. So maybe I should have done this sooner. Um, so this one here is short, but it has weights. Hang on. Let me, uh, what I put that parsed up high. How is four tops useful? I don't know if you can feed the ALUs fast enough, to be honest. This outputted two programs, zero and one. And for some reason, it seems like it has to run them in a reverse order. Uh, Cause this is like a weights copy in. Weights copy in. Decompile that. Let's see what we get. Okay. Hmm. 
No, look, this is very small and readable. This is going to copy in hex 100 weights. All right, should we make this thing live up to its name and actually be a decompiler? Try to understand what's going on here. That'll probably help us, right? Because we should understand most of these instructions now. What's this? This moves zero into one. This moves zero into zero. This does a comparison between zero and one and checks if it's less than. Uh, this checks if one is not equal to one. Oh, I know what this does. This just sets this flag always. So then you always have it set. This ends it with that. This adds, this moves four into four, four, four plus zero. Yeah, so these, these things must be predicates. Test EAX, EAX, pretty much, yeah. Is that what that does? I mean, it does the same thing. This one's a predicate where we add one to two, only sometimes, I don't know. Because we don't fully understand it until we reverse engineer this, and then then we do all this. Which I think pushes these. Into here. Somewhere there's an 80, maybe this 80, which says how much weights we uh, download. And it like puts them into RAM. And then it does this whole, like, oh, maybe this is like USB endpoint switching or something. Maybe this is like, you have to like toggle your setup packets. I don't know how deep the USB stack goes. Uh, then, the stores, this, and the rights. So we almost fully understand this program. The only things we don't understand, okay, are this and this. Maybe fully understanding this program would be a good idea. And this one has two inputs which are uh, base address parameters. I don't really understand why it has two of them. Yeah, at least I can change S off to print the known ones. Uh, that's less easy. That's less easy. <laughs> yes, I, I could do that. Uh, Zero just means don't run the scalar unit. I don't know what that does.
here's a question I have. Uh, so that's currently the thing. What if I store these out of order? What if I do m offset equals one and zero here? What happens then? Did it send them out of order? Is that different? Yeah, okay. It actually seems not to matter. What if I do this instead? It just doesn't work. It doesn't actually break anything. That one wasn't really necessary. Is this one necessary? Not necessary. How did I not realize that those ones just weren't necessary? Is this one necessary? That one's necessary, interesting. The only one that matters are these. Whatever is an M offset three, this matters. This is just the data and we can do whatever we want with it. Does zero work? No, does one work? About three. It might only be from four to seven. Prefix is a status register. I think prefix, I mean, the only thing I know is that it controls like the read of M scalar. So maybe the ones with other prefixes are like activating more parts of the chip. It's like all I can think of. Why is it still flashing? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna set him scalar to eight. Doesn't work. Uh, here I set it to three. Wait, and I set it to three and that works. Interesting. This is this last number here. What happens if I put something in M offset four? It just does nothing. And then this one, if I were to change this to something like this, it just wouldn't send anything? No, it still sends stuff, okay. Uh, we might just have M size wrong then. Okay, what if I put a one there? Doesn't matter. What if I change this to 19? Doesn't matter. Interesting. What if I change this to, that probably matters. Okay, so it's the top two bits of M size that matter. Uh, 1C. Doesn't work. Okay. So which bits matter? Uh, just the top. How big is M size? 14. Top 3 matter? 14 might actually be too big. I don't know why I think it's 14. Make it 10, call another one up here. We'll call it like um, 
uh, VR maybe. And then here we'll say VR equals, what's that, five? No, this is on the wrong side. Yeah, the ups are five and six. Glad you enjoy the Instagram Live exclusive content. Um, Why do I think VOP and M offset are different? What if I were to combine these into one large VOP? Does that make sense? Not really. It doesn't seem right. It seems like it does seem like an offset. But I don't think it's M offset. I think it's like V offset or something. Guys, this stuff's addictive, man. You know? It's like a game. Okay, so is it possible that these are like, is it possible these are loads and that's a store or something? Alright, um... Now uh, we're gonna call this dense18 mall.coral. It's not it's frog zero zero. Okay, well here's another VOP5. Should kind of make sense. Oh yeah. Did we get to the bottom of whether these are needed? Do I need to have a prefix zero there? Because I'm not using uh, mscaler there. I bet I don't. Something doesn't work. Interesting.
Uh, I don't have an LG 5K anymore, actually. This is a, it's a Dell 4K. These are the ones we gotta work to. I bought one here first. Um, I think this is pretty much what I have. That's that. Dell, that. I guess we don't totally understand. I mean, my guess here would be that this is a function that's gated on. Okay, we should try that. We should do some experiments. Let's 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 test for that. Okay. So let's do this. Uh, so we're gonna see Abby Abby appear there. But now I think this will gate it on uh, predicate register one. No Abby Abby. But if we set predicate register one, and now it's obvious why you have this neck UI. Uh, actually, we're not even gonna do neck UI. We're just gonna do neck U. It should be that. Um, and we'll say something like if zero is not equal to zero. Actually, we're gonna put SI equals zero. This should set. That should set predicate flag one regardless. Um, it's gonna set predicate register file one. So you'll see it's set to one. No, it didn't set predicate register file to one. Uh, why not? Not equal. SY zero, SI zero. Mm, doesn't work. We can try like neck UI. Oh, NECQ is going to clear it. We need EQ. We want to set it, right? That sets it. Uh, but there's still no Abby Abby. Yeah, well, we'll throw a cafe babe in there so it looks a little different. Okay, we are setting the bit now in the way that I expected. Mm, but how come this move i is not actually predicate gated? Hmm. Okay. That worked. If I don't do that, or if we add a neck here. Okay. 813 gates on the predicate. Uh, actually, how do I control which register it is that it gates on? On register one, we get cafe babe. Now, what if I send it to register two? No cafe babe, okay. What if I put a two there? Cafe babe. Interesting. So that's probably the predicate register and 813 means gate on it. I don't know what 811 means. But um, we're going to throw some new stuff in prefix, OK? So we're going to say, you know, uh, RF. We're going to run flags, bits, integer, four. And then um, I'm going to call this pred reg bits, integer, three. 
All right, and then we want to subtract 7 from that 22. So we're left with 50. Now we're going to have to modify all our prefixes to lose 7. Ooh, this is getting long. Uh, probably going to just want to not do, what did I do there? 12 is a little aggressive. 10. So the prefix then is just usually 10. Default prefix is 10. Oh, what about these craps? Um, this prefix is 1f, it's the top prefix, they're both 1f. Interesting, it's just the predreg that changes? No, that can't be right. do it, but it's not right. And how about for halt? I don't think that's right. I broke something. Something serious. The uh, op equals two for this one. prefixes of 10 now. It's all correct. These I just need to get shift shifted uh wrong then. Oh, that's okay that that is a V up. We, we don't want to set the V up there. Um, but we might actually need to set predreg here doesn't really make sense so which makes me think that I made a mistake and maybe predreg is actually only three 
I don't understand though why this is different. That doesn't make sense. Like why does this program no longer even run? Uh, I wouldn't trust Google at all. M size equals 10, pre drag equals 4. It's also a decompile my program. seems right. I don't understand why it broke. Comment out a whole bunch of these. What if we just have like that one left? Very short program. Doesn't work. Uh, it's just for just in case. I didn't just get into a bad state. What what happened? Was 22, right? Broke. Oh, I should have committed. Oh, I renamed stuff. Oh, that was dumb. Oh, dumb. That was so dumb. It's because I renamed stuff. Had nothing to do with any of those other changes. Okay, it runs again. Now we don't get a status response. All right, it's fine. Uh, put that back, put that stuff back. Uh, these two have predreg equals four. We're gonna test out this predreg stuff. all fine. I don't actually need any of this.
go back to these experiments. I do have eight of them, right? Okay, I have all eight. There's a chance it doesn't let you put the full range in, or there's a chance that it's just alias to mean something else. Okay. Uh, prefix equals 10, run flags equals 3, pred reg equals 1. That should only move cafe babe if we've set pred reg 1, which we have. Now, what if I do pred reg 7? Let's try six. Six is a weirder one. Five's good. Five's good. Take the numbers right. It doesn't even work. Okay. So that's interesting. That number is probably not a part of predreg. That number is probably a part of prefix. Uh, and predreg is only two. And then these can go, which didn't make sense. So you can only gate, you have seven, uh, only first four gate exec. I don't know, I'm kind of just guessing here, but let's see if that works. That didn't do what I expected at all. Oh, it's because prefix is now different. No, that's prefix 800, that was never gonna run. Um, did I add one more bit to prefix? Yeah, we only want to shift it six. All the prefix is now a 20 and a 20. So. Okay, good. Predreg three, um, but like if we set prefix 21, predreg zero, and we put it in four over there, it doesn't work, right? Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, it seems like predreg is actually only three and we can only gate, we can only gate execution based on three different things. Okay, um, let's try not setting on flags and seeing what we get. Oh, we still get cafe babe, but that actually could just be, we gotta try the opposite here. Yeah, that runs no matter what. Uh, let's just do this. Some factorial shit. All right, which ones get it, which ones don't? Uh, they all get it. And that's because we did EQ. Zero and they all ran. That doesn't make sense. Predreg zero. Why did they all run? That one should not have run. This is totally wrong and not what these things do. No matter what now. Oh, what run flags? Run flag. Oh, that's really actually that's really annoying. Uh, I want to add an assert for that. Yeah. If uh, k assert k in no. Um, I want to assert that it's in instruction. Does that work? What? No.
How do I like see all the flags that are in there? I guess I could parse one and then use it as like a template. Whatever, don't make typos. I'm gonna make that mistake again. I can tell already. If I don't make this work, I'm gonna make this mistake again. doesn't work um, run flag equals three Wait, what were my tests even doing then if I said predator equal one doesn't run is that one. Oh, that's like a knot. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, so zero and two mean always, but one means like it's like not. See what I'm saying? Well, no, it can't be that. Cause what when I said pair equal to two with zero, they all moved. What? Oh no, not this last one. Oh yeah, okay. So run flag equals one means uh, run if equal to zero, run if equal to one, uh, run if pred, uh, pred reg. This is run if predreg equal to one, and this is run if predreg is equal to zero. Does that make sense? Uh, now you'll see, we'll do a test here where we'll flip this around and we'll get the opposite behavior. Yeah. Wait, what? No, no, okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Run flag and predreg are backwards. I don't get it. Okay, hang on, we got some stuff wrong. Because look, that's not right. So the gate Wow, and I was so arrogant to think we'd say we could only gate on the first three or something. I don't know if this is right. Okay. Run flag here. Two and three are the ones that matter. Two, four, and five. So easy to get this stuff wrong when it's you only get one bit on these, right? Like the on the equals and stuff, you get you get a lot of uh, setting two, four, and five. Okay. This just might be totally wrong. Um. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. We have the two fours and fives. We have more than the two fours and fives. We have zero, two, which doesn't make any sense. 
zero to unless That runs them all. Use cred reg. Let's call that gate. at zero, one, and three, which we had two, four, and five set. Okay, that's definitely something. At least we have predreg in the right place now. Now the zero, one, three, and it only runs it if, yeah. It only runs it, okay. Um, run if predreg. Because that's if that's zero, because that one's zero, that one's zero, that one's one. Yeah, that's the same pattern as that, right? Okay, who thinks run flag is bogus then? And just as a part of prefix. These are gated on predreg zero. Did we set predreg zero? It's possible a run flag inverts it. Which is, this is a lot of bits to devote to this. Hmm, interesting. I mean, this might just be real. I, I don't know. Okay, now we're getting to... Okay, that's right. Um, not pred. Wow, okay, so this devotes five bits to that. I mean, I don't know, it's a large thing. Maybe that's fine. We just need, we need to like clean this up now. This, is, this, this, uh, this stuff's becoming unwieldy. Run flags real. I think it's part of prefix. And there's reason to think it's not, but. Let me 
me just modify my disassembler quickly. If k equals um, gate pred reg or not pred, gate, gate pred peg or not pred, uh, not in. If uh, dd sub gate uh, but actually not pred means we want not not pred that's what it's really called uh, call it yes pred or you know what we'll just call it um It's just ended with it, you see what I mean? If they match, it's checked for equality. Uh, yes, Fred's a fine name. Uh, if DD gate, if not DD, yes, Fred, um, we'll just say PP equals quotes, PP plus equals not. sub 4s uh, plus equals stir dd sub red reg. Right, so now we can uh, see without having to clutter up my disassembler uh, pred reg. without having to clutter up my disassembler if things are gated right um, so like for example we can go down here and just change all these yes preds to zero Shop is that? I want to write justify the string. I don't know how to do that though. Um, okay, and then that's going to be these ones are these four are match those four, and the other ones are not those four. Okay, okay, that all seems right then. You're right. So then it like. Uh, run flag. Who thinks run flag's real? What's it next to? It's next to yes pred. No, that doesn't seem. They really. How many bits do they devote to this? It does seem weird. The prefix is seventeen bits, though. I mean, we can give one more to m size, maybe. Whatever. Make it seventeen. And those are all going to become forties. These are forties. This experiment 40 40 40 uh, and these become fives okay. cool all right that was a good puzzle to solve Okay, so these ones are gated on, these two are gated on, oh, yeah, it's, it's checked there, because that's a ULTI here. So it checks, so those two are gated on zero. Uh, yeah, Tiny Guide should work on Raspberry Pi GPU, though not well, because the Raspberry Pi is a terrible GPU. Apple built a custom ISA. It's pretty cool.
What's the next mystery to solve? That's well, nice. These are all 40 prefix now. They're just uh, I don't think that's going to be actually we're going to change M offset. I don't like M offset anymore and we're going to call it V offset. That seem right? If like this is like the vector Maybe that's not the op, maybe that's actually the register. Could five and six be special registers? No, it's not B float 16. And this is one of the reasons that training would be tricky is it's only uh, U and A. Mm, look at all this fancy stuff. I feel like it's going to have be things like that. All right. And then prefix goes crazy here. You know what? I don't think that's right. I think M offset is right. I think it's V offset. By the way, let's check if my good my my bug catcher worked. Um, right, because is this the vector offset? I don't know if VOP is even right. That could just be VREG. You know what I mean? Like it pushes it to a... Uh... Oh, I had so much more docs on this somewhere. I forget where. Strings the uh, scalar load, scalar in sub, scalar branch reg. Now, the only reason to think this is a VOP is because, like, look at this. We understand everything about this instruction, and we know what it's doing, and it's got to just be doing a 5, right? Because otherwise, we don't have an operation. We just have registers. Not doing any scalar operation. We confirm we could move out the scalar operation. All right, so this function is supposedly a dense matrix multiply. Let's go back to div 220. Well, 
In this case, this isn't V op. I know it isn't because that just that actually belongs on M size. Interesting that there's only two there though. Why do I think V op? Five and six. Well, that actually uses all the things. Right. Uses the same one that that two uses, even though I know that two is wrong. Uh, but that's just because it has a different prefix. Th this one determines like the length of the program. not security no security you see here's the thing there's reverse engineering and there's security and everyone who wants to work in like security today I don't know I'm not gonna say everyone but almost everyone I meet's a loser right like and and here's why it's it's like there there, there is some sort of prestige that like, oh, I work in security oh I find binary exploits to keep the internet safe oh my god like it's the people like this who ruin it, right? And and you know, back in the day, th th that's not what this stuff was, right? This stuff was hacking iPhones was as absolutely valueless as as hacking the Google Coral, uh, and that's what was cool about it. Right? Like it wasn't um, you you didn't have these people yet who showed up who like oh this is what i'm going to do i consider myself an information security professional right and and these people showed up and they ruined like a lot of old school hacker culture around this and i guess what upsets me more is that not everybody really sees the difference right that they not everybody really sees like what's wrong with this they think it's just the same stuff and, and it's not it's, it's really morphed and they're the kind of people who do it have really morphed uh, now this isn't like terrible um you know obviously read the evolution of subcultures and this is just what happens to subcultures but uh i don't do any of that stuff anymore any of any any reverse engineering that may have like value to somebody in terms of a weaponized exploit not touching it right um red teaming pen testing uh security audits bug bounties all this stuff i wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole uh it, it's it's nothing like the stuff that i started doing um like would it be cool to like if this thing had like you know secure firmware that we have to dump to find a buffer overflow like you know you know where i do find that this stuff kind of still lives uh, and it's really cool. I like watching these videos. The people who are doing the uh, like like console uh, hacking, not 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 like PS3 kind of stuff. I mean, like the kind of stuff where people are doing or PS5 or whatever, whatever, where people like hack Pokemon Yellow and they can like hit a certain uh, key combination to get arbitrary code execution inside Pokemon, like the Mario that live modifies itself. These people, man, that's hacker culture, man. What's my main source of income? Uh, I'm a pimp, man. You know, got uh, you pimp people out, man, and then they come and they bring you the money, and it's great, man. <laughs> Missing no, yeah. I just watched a video and a guy like broke it down, broke it down. Like that's that's cool. What's UNC3? Why is it 26 bits? That's a really upsetting number of bits. 26. Why 26? You know it's not 26 bits. Okay. 
these three are correct. Um, these four are correct. Unknown, unknown, right? The rest of the stuff I kind of just made up. Um, M size may very well not be M size. I just made it line up there. Uh, oh, what is what is M size down there? What if M size and V op are the same thing? Did I have them combined before? I feel like I might have. I have no reason to believe that V op is actually a thing, and it's not just part of M size. Yeah, I had them combined before. I, I have no reason to believe that that VOPS actually a thing. And this isn't just in size equals 1400. Oh no, but okay, I did have reason for that. And it's because I could change it and it wouldn't change anything. If I change, you, you can go here and you can type anything in M size and it doesn't do anything. What, 3FF is max. Right, does the same thing. So the fact that those could be changed independently, uh, I wonder if M size could steal some off a prefix. No, but that'd be the wrong direction, right? Because I do know that M size has to be correct for that. So it's probably just. Um, <laughs> the lady doesn't like it. It's the lady's. <laughs> no, sure, do look like something, right? Like that, that does look like a proper break, right? It's a video game, guys. You know, it's the same thing. How can I be clear minded? I don't know. I mean, I'm probably starting to fade. What? Don't you guys work eight hours? Like, this is just what I'm doing instead of a job. You know, what do you do at work all day? Do you not work for eight hours? Oh, and you wonder why I think remote work's a crock of shit? <laughs> like, how do you how do you stay clear-minded working eight hours straight? Don't you guys have jobs? Like nine to five jobs. Where where you go work for eight hours, you take a bit of a lunch break, like You know, this is what I did instead of work today. Yeah, if I came home from work and then did eight more hours of work, all right, that'd kind of be a lot of work. I mean, not that I haven't done that, but I couldn't do that every day. We're getting kind of tired, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna like chill, read, watch some TV, maybe play some chess. Uh, you know, and I'm gonna figure out 80% of the time your job, you do nothing. Then what kind of job do you have, man? Like, I've never done nothing at a job. Did I watch Fisher Random? No, I don't watch Fisher Random. It'll, Fisher Random will mess with me, man. I'll just, I'll just like... It'll just, it'll just, it'll mess up like me thinking about stuff. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. There's probably some like good actual advice about this. That's been a cool thing about about chess. I've been reading and like there's like clear ways that people improve. Um, 
Why does that have an S op of 20? I thought 20 did nothing. Why does it have a prefix of 4A? All right, okay. We have the opening and the closing. What's my rating? About 1,200. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you say the S, wow, if the average worker really works two and a half hours a day, if people are like, where's productivity going in America? Like, um, Yeah, you're a 500k TC business developer in SF. Like, all these people, you know, bro, like, you know you should be fired, man. And I'm just like, look, look, hey, I respect the hustle. And you know, you know how I feel about this, right? You want to scam people? That's fine. Now, my favorite kind of scammer is the kind of person who straight up tells you it's a scam. Uh, like, to everybody's face. And they're just honest with everybody about it, right? But, look, I'm even, that's even a lot to ask from people, right? The only kind of person who I won't tolerate is the kind of person who lies to themselves, right? The kind of person who's like, look, like, no, you don't understand. It creates, no, no. <laughs> That's the person I can't tolerate. And guys, you do have to tolerate everybody. We live in a democracy. That's right. No, no. Na 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 na. Let's try the dense mold program. Let's run. Now we're gonna have to put back in the uh... getting out the tensor. Look at that. FF00, FF00. What if I put like a two in there? Oh, it's because we didn't load the weights. Well, we didn't run the program that loads the weights. And for some reason, they're separate programs, which is kind of terrible. Uh, yeah, exactly. People, you know, people always saying this shit about like how social media is destroying your attention span. Bro, what did you do before social media? Oh well, I used to read a novel every weekend, but now, no, you did dumbass shit every weekend before too. Now you do dumbass shit on a cell phone, right? And that's whenever people complain about phones, I'm always like, what do you think the people were doing before phones that was so great? No, the same people who read books today read books back then, and the same people who couldn't read books back then still can't read books today. <laughs> Reading is hard, guys. Not everyone can do it. No, like this books I can't read. This books is just too hard for me, you know? Everyone watched TV. Oh, before TV, everybody was like Ben Franklin composing elegant letters to each other. No, they weren't. <laughs> you know, what? the only difference is you just see a lot more dumbasses today. <laughs> you know, the internet. And then you can talk about this is the reason for the great SJW freak out of 2014, right? Like, for the first time on social media, these people were forced to be exposed to people who didn't agree with them. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, not everybody agrees with you. Not everybody agrees with me. 
Like, I posted on Instagram yesterday. I really like this comment. Some guy wrote on Reddit. And then some guy on Twitter. Wait, wait, wait. I'll quote it because it was good. I'll quote it. I'll quote it. I'll quote it. We're talk, talking about, uh, you know, me being a comma. Uh, and so since my Instagram is fair and balanced, we should include the other perspective. Referring to me. I've absolutely hated this moron since day one. It was good for comma. It was not good for comma to have him involved. Guy is a straight up lunatic. Glad he's putting his smug head down and walking off in absolute shame. Still love and support Kama, but this guy definitely needs to hang the hat up and ride off into the sunset. <laughs> um, cool, bro. Cool story, bro. We gotta, we gotta be fair and balanced. You know, we gotta investigate both perspectives. Close to the source of distraction. Look, man, people always got distracted by things. <laughs> I genuinely don't think he's a troll. <laughs> you can go find him on Twitter, man. <laughs> the comic book guy, right? Oh my god, no. But I can read a book without getting distracted. <laughs> Wait, why are we back on the dead beef? Uh, why didn't that work? What? Oh, did I keep that breakpoint around or something? No. 420. Okay. I'm literally just setting my I'm just passing in the code for div 210, right, right there. What happened? What did I break? I mean, the personality database is an ENTP. Is that a good thing? What did I break? Oh, do I have to send in 10 as well? I probably have to send in 10. Let's just multiply that by two. Yeah, okay, cool. Conscious has gotten such rotten responses. And all of this controversy circles me, and it seems that the media immediately. I think some of the thing is this just moving things around in like RAM. Some of those things are just RAM addresses. Uh, okay, 7B0 and these two are different.
I mean, that, okay, that's an interesting thing to focus on just right there, All right? We have div 210. And we have div 220. Let's look at those. Let's see how they're different. Now, this is actually going to error out. Yeah, because we didn't send enough information and it's upset with me. So prefix, sorry, so first thing that obviously stands out to me is prefix is not prefix, right? This, at least, these first two bytes in prefix are uh, those four. Probably actually belong to M size. Because like, there's no way, like, this is changing. There's no way this is changing actual uh, control flow of the program. I'm also now skeptical of VS reg, too. And I think about 19 versus D. Why do I think VS reg's a thing? Okay, what if I took this? Di okay, these two don't make any sense, right? The fact that that changed doesn't make sense. Okay, let's let's also let's compare the inputs as well. Mm, we solve the mysteries. We out here solve the mysteries. These are look interesting. Two D zero. And two E zero. Wait, what? When I change it to 10, it now has a, that doesn't make sense. It now gates that on a, on a register. It now gates it on seven. No, like I just don't believe that. No, see those are all merged together. That means something else here, damn it. the registers differently that one I kind of might believe
Now it's only that one that's different, 6b0. Six B zero. Why do I think, okay, VS reg. Yeah, that's not always right either. It is right sometimes though. How is this div two and this ReLU? Oh, maybe sometime it's an op? And like that's div2 op and that's the ReLU op. Okay, let's compile a few more things. Um, let's first make sure we actually get this again when we do div2. Help out with wildfires or something. Someday I'm going to take notes of all these people and vote for the opposite, what they tell me to vote for. And then if enough people did that, guys, we could be a movement, you know? Diff temp prog zero zero div two. This guy's the same. All right. Um, I don't know. Let's add two. Add one. Okay, six B zero is only one different. I don't even know how this thing represents numbers. What else can we do? Exp. Illegal scale inf log. TensorFlow has no log. Log two. Does TensorFlow have a log two? TensorFlow has no log two. Oh, math log. Oh, of course. That's math. Illegal scale inf. I don't know. What if I go only from zero? There we go. Oh. Doesn't work. Can we compile exp? No, we can't. Can we compile sigmoid? Sigmoid. Everyone loves sigmoid, right? That's like someone's favorite function somewhere. Oh, logistic. 
No, that one's longer. Interesting. I wonder what's different. Sigmoid. Wow, it starts really early being different. All right. All right, uh, what else can we try? I don't know, sub? I feel like this one's gonna be a lot like add. Wait, what? That one's only 810 long? How is that one shorter? I don't even know, man. How is this one short? Because it doesn't do any math? How come when you add one, You have to do all this stuff, but when you sub one, you don't have to. It starts being different at 3C0. Sub one. Okay. I mean, that looks pretty obvious to me that that's actually all just one thing. Like that's all one, uh... Actually, I don't even know. You think it's that, but maybe not. My only thing, I guess, is that I bet V offset and V op are fused. Okay, how do I do, how do I do, uh, how do I do unions? Can I do this? Fields that do not work and fail. Union, great. You I hated unions. This is a hard re-CTF challenge, yeah, right?
I don't know, like I look at this and I kind of think that like these are merged into one here. These ones are pretty well understood. But like this is only when it's a scalar instruction. don't know when it's a vector instruction like here we don't know that prefix could mean interpret it totally differently actually B is missing the four B is missing that that four right so I think that means to interpret it differently right because if you do like this is right right no oh that's right yeah, so like this one doesn't have the four. This one does. It's the same four that's in all of these. That like tells you if it's a scalar instruction or something. progress we haven't found anything with control flow yet and we know there has to be I run something like give to 20 we know there has to be control flow and we have an idea of where it has to be, too. Oh, uh, that's just complaining because I didn't give it enough shit. No, it runs at all. I don't think this is actually like not six, right? I think this is like when it's interpreted the other way. These things are all correct. If prefix is 40, should we uh, should we decompile it? Maybe that'll have things start to make sense. This is like a vector scalar push operation. Loads things into. What is this eight? Actually, that's a good point. We have no reason to believe that. We know there's that special bit and prefix for the 40, but we have no reason to believe there aren't like six there that we can factor out. That mean halt? Which one means halt? I don't actually know if that even halts. Different. 
Oh, actually, wait. Just because I'm not even running this program right now. PC is 11. Uh, which bit means all? Not the 8. The 8 doesn't matter. Yeah, look, it continues to run. Um, Halt's on the 2 there. See any other twos? It's like eight forty two here for some reason, but I don't really know what that eight does. That could mean something totally different. Compiler for Edge TPU open source? Well, shit, if it was open source, we wouldn't have to do this. All right, that's it. That's today. Um, we made good progress. We figured out all the scalar operations. We figured out how this instruction gating works. We figured out how to at least send the USB status, even if we don't fully understand it. Um, welcome. Uh, maybe I'll do this more tomorrow. I don't know. Hey, Google, you want to send me some docs? I'd appreciate some docs. Let me check my email. Let's see if I got any docs. Send me docs. No docs. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.